All right, everybody, welcome to TFT Tinfoil Talk. Today, we're going to be dealing with hidden histories. Whoo, talk about a broad, broad category, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to delineate that down into two separate categories, actually, for everybody watching and everybody up uh, in here. I would say the hidden histories is a, uh, a combination of uh, unknown histories, therefore mysteries, and Hidden mm-hmm. histories, as in conspiracies, things that have been intentionally hidden. They're, they're separate issues, uh, but they all fall, fall under this umbrella. Boy, is it broad. Uh, but as you guys know, there's no way we can cover everything, but we're going to have a good, fun time uh, trying to do. Uh, but, uh, of course, you guys, uh, check out all our links, and um, especially the uh, Fanspeak one on Facebook, as well as uh, uh, hitting that share button and letting everybody know so we can get a big group in here to talk about the conspiracy theories that is hidden history. Uh, but uh, while you guys come in and share that, we get more and more people in here let's come over here and say hello to our panel uh, of course uh, first i want to come over and say hello to the lord of thunder himself the holder of lightning bolts and oiled things thundero hello chester how are you tonight i am awesome dude i'm going to talk about conspiracy theories how happy could i possibly be <laughs> you uh, can't you know, get hey, much happier than that in life no, i don't dude. think yeah um especially because i think of all the topics we'll cover this is the one i might be able to be the most useful on uh instead of just kind of spouting speculations as i normally would but uh, in this one i know a little bit of something you know so uh maybe maybe i will be useful we'll see i could be completely useless as usual Uh, but we'll see see. (laughs) uh (laughs) but thank you very much for being here with us man this is gonna be a lot of fun and of course we're also joined from my my uh, brother Goomba from the north. How you doing, Todd? Doing really good. Thanks for uh, letting me join. Oh, no problem, dude. Nice to have you here. Uh, and uh, I'm, I know you got uh, some opinions on stuff. And that's the cool thing about, you know, conspiracy theories. Everybody has an opinion on something, right? So, I'll be looking forward to seeing what Well, I, I, I have an opinion, but uh, I'm not most knowledgeable on conspiracy theories oh that's all right you don't have to be we're not we're not delving in and trying to solve anything here guys uh what we're doing is just having some fun with it right because conspiracy theories are greatly entertaining and especially when you don't take them so seriously right uh we're just having some fun you don't have to be so in depth because uh if you don't know something maybe somebody else does uh does And, and to be honest with you our chat which is filling up like crazy thank you guys very much for sharing that out um uh they our chat knows a lot we have a lot of knowledgeable people over here in this community it's really cool uh so uh we're good to go man uh thank you for coming all right and of course our last panelist for now although i know more will show up as time goes by uh we have the denali llama with us how you doing dude he's muted dodging the black Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm <laughs> odd. Pretend to be me. I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing great. Just dodging the black helicopters. They're you know running back and forth. It's true. You got to watch out for the black helicopters, man. Yeah. And I always thought that was a. Fu- we said this before, but I always thought that was a funny conspiracy. I mean, really? Do you think the government doesn't have unmarked vehicles? Really? Of course they do. I mean, it's even not a conspiracy uh, at all. Even police officers. Yeah, those. You think three cops have those, right? Mm. Although it is pretty easy to tell which ones are the cop, uh, the undercover cop cars, though, isn't it? They kind of stand They're, out. Yeah, yeah, they drive yeah. the Mustangs. <laughs> yeah, what happens, now... right? <laughs> Over here in Japan, it's really easy. One, uh, they're always white, and two, they're always boring. So. <laughs> It's true, man. Uh, the problem is, though, of course, over here in Japan, the most popular color for car is white. Ah, <sighs> boring, boring, boring. Uh, but anyway, uh, of course, guys, we're going to jump into it here. And the first thing I want to do today, actually, uh, let me come over here and share because uh, we are going to start. Um, uh, you know, uh, we uh, this is a little bit different format than usual, as you guys know. When you come over to fan speak stuff, uh, I usually have a whole bunch of pictures and images and stuff prepared, and we and we can jump through it real easy. New stories that Danelli collects and such. Uh, but this show is a little bit different. Um, uh, this show, we're actually kind of searching and finding as we go, uh, which is kind of interesting for me, actually. It's a different format. I'm, I'm enjoying it, actually. Uh, but um, uh, let me come on over here, and I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to share something uh, into the browser. I'm going to come to this in a second. But uh, what I want to do 
is uh, come back over here to this. Now, um, this is the logo that I put together. Okay. Uh, you guys can all see that clearly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now I, you know, I, I'm not no master or nothing. As you guys know, I've been accused of being a boomer many times and <clears throat> I am, <laughs> uh, but Hey, you know, uh, but, uh, luckily, uh, J pots, uh, from J pots Stu studios, uh, said, Hey, Chester, I heard you uh, looking for some uh, cool logos. Uh, he put some together for us and I kind of want to look through them and see what you guys think would be coolest. I know what I like the best, but let's see what they like. So we're going to number these as, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, and five. So this first one up here, the one I made is number one. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, number two here. Ooh, that's a nice one. Look at that. Shiny. I like it. TFT. Okay, that's two. And then, uh, okay, we have uh, three. Ooh, that's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay, and then we have four. All right, all right. I like the raised edges on that. That's kind of interesting, yeah. Go. Mm -hmm. And then we, of course, we have the last one here, five. Ooh, it glows. That one. Yeah. yeah this one has a good feel to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, anyway, so let me go through it again. We have uh, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, so, hmm, what do you think, folks? I like, I like one and five. One in mm -hmm. five. Well, one's the one I made. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll have to miss this because of work. Have fun, guys. Thank. You. Well, thanks for coming and, say, and saying hi, Cat. Uh, but uh, yeah, you guys in the chat, let me know. What do you think? Which one of these do you like? I'll go through them one more time, and I can come back to this later too. Maybe it's not super important, but uh, I just uh, uh, it's really cool that uh, J Potts put those together for us. So this is one, two, which this is the one I kind of like actually. Uh, three. Yeah, I like two. Four. And five. Five's good, too, though. I do like five as well. Uh, but um, anyway, you guys take a look at that. You think and tell me which is, uh, what your opinion is over time. Uh, and uh, well, I'll shift them all up. Easy to do. No big deal. Uh, and everyone's just saying hi right now. But just keep it in mind. And I'll come back maybe at the end of the show. You guys remind me if I forget. And uh, I'll try to get some fi final voting on that and so I can shift that over. But with that said, however... Uh, we do need now to start talking about the actual hidden histories. So uh, I just did a simple little search, guys, uh, for hidden histories, right? And uh, uh, and just did an image search, and uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of books and uh, and uh, TV shows and uh, all kinds of stuff talking about hidden histories. Uh, so it is a very popular topic. OK, uh, like look at this one, the J Jamaican hidden histories. Well, I don't know what, how much hidden that can be. I mean, we know, we know quite, quite well what happened. Uh, but um, ooh, look at all there's so much, dude. Uh, and there's a lot. The, the, let me see what the, the channel uh, total. Oh, they don't give me that anymore. Maybe it's over here. Oh, there we go. So there's about 40 million, 900 thousand results <laughs> for hidden history. Damn. Oh, boy. Yeah. That is a big topic to cover. Right, we see uh, we have an Edwin in here. Hello, sir. We got a comic book Bob. Hello. Dennis Parak. Dave's in here. Joshua, of course, is in here. Oh, goodness. Dragon is back. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we got a good group coming in here, guys. Thank you very much. Just uh, do us a favor. Hit that share button and let everybody know what's going on so they come and join us. But uh, uh, what I'm going to do here today, as we, we've been doing all along, I'm going to just do searches as the guys put stuff forward. So uh, who wants to go first? Who wants to introduce their first uh, hidden history today? Um, I guess I will. Um, All right. One of, the, one of the biggest ones that is a pretty rabid debate in ancient history and ancient archaeology would be architecture. Um, there's structures out there, including in ancient Egypt, really all over the world, where they have built things they should not have been able to build by what we understand as their um, level of technology for the time. They even have stone that is far too perfectly cut for anything, any tools they should have had at the time. Like there's only so much you can do with, with brass or copper um, or even further back that you couldn't even get these stones this well milled today. You couldn't get them this well cut today. Um, 
it would be hard. It would be very hard to even recreate something as simple as the pyramids. Well, I call it simple uh, today, even with modern technology to the precision that they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's actually quite impressive. And to think that the, the mostly the, uh, the accepted theory is that they just had a lot of manpower. And that's how they were able to do it. That's pretty silly. If you ask me, uh, people are people and we're lazy. And we're going to find the easiest and most efficient way we can to do something that's going to not change throughout history. Yeah. Um, so I don't believe they just used a ton of manpower to do it. They had some form of technology we don't understand, especially when it comes to uh, like things like the pyramids and the size of those blocks are massive. Um, there's some in South America, the size mm -hmm. of the blocks that they use mm -hmm. to build the walls and things are absolutely humongous, bigger than a man, weigh hundreds of tons. That there's no way they could have moved those and done what they've done without some form of technology that we either don't understand or is being suppressed. Knowledge of what the ancients had, one way or the other, there was definitely something more than what we're told. You can just look at it and see that. There's no yeah. way they could have done this with just a bunch of dudes and some stone picks. It's just not possible. No, it's impossible. Yeah. And of course this is the big one right off the, right off the bat. We're jumping into the big one. And uh, uh, here's uh, let us give some guidelines for this conversation as we go forward. And of course, chat, we want your opinion guys. We want you to be involved in these conversations uh, more so than any of the shows we do actually. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I see Roger Heller and Eric are in here. So welcome guys. Uh, but we definitely want your opinions, but let me set some guidelines for it. First of all, uh, the very odd thing about uh, archaeology, uh, and uh, in particularly, and anthropology as well, but uh, archaeology, the further back you go in time, the more sophisticated the technology is. Now, that's odd. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that way. Okay? Uh, but I will put right up out front uh, with this from my, my anthropology aspects of myself. Um, I have been a long believer in the great disaster of uh, 11,700 years ago. And of course, now that has been proven uh, academically. Uh, so that is, uh, that's a very um, a good thing. I think that that's finally been accepted. Um, and uh, uh, the simple fact of the matter is, is, I believe we are living in a post-apocalyptic world in a way. Uh, yeah. And before that great disaster, there were great civilizations. Now, um, you know, some people will go as so far as space travel and stuff like that. Eh, who knows? You know, who knows? But uh, uh, at least a level of, say, Egyptian uh, uh, to Roman uh, level, easily. And another thing we can understand about it, just from the this, this, this simple facts we have, is this. Those ancient people understood, understood st stone, sound, mm -hmm. and water far more than we do. Now, did they have electricity running around? Uh, there's suggestion that they had some, but it wasn't as sophisticated as we have. Uh, did they have like computers and stuff like we have? Uh, there's no evidence of that type of computer. So it was a very different culture. It was a very different society. Uh, it was different, very different types of technologies than what we have. They're not necessarily comparable, uh, but that doesn't well, mean they're not sophisticated, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and you can't really tell about those no. devices That's as well hard. because think, well, think about it. It, the disaster happened about twelve thousand to eleven uh, years ago. Yeah, and our cars, our tronic, our building don't even last more than a hundred, two hundred years before it disappears. And a good example is the Titanic. You have a whole ship, and within a century. A majority of that ship is gone mm -hmm. um yeah. and now you're right. and you're expecting you know a ship that's made by man metal you know even though it's underwater um and all that you that ship is gone less than maybe well, the majority of less than 100 years compared yeah. that to eleven thousand, and your anything that you dig up a pebble you any technological advance that would say hey these are advanced civilization um, things would not be existing because, you know, we haven't created anything that would last 
for millenniums. Yeah, and it's more and that. it's more complicated than that. Even yeah, uh, we do have to keep mm-hmm. in mind that. Uh, then once again, I'm going to. Even though I would love to be the the dude throwing out all the cool conspiracies, I think today because of my background, I'm actually going to be playing the the academic devil's advocate a little bit, which is sad <laughs> right. for me. Uh, but I'm going to be doing that uh, just so we can all make right. the conversation more interesting. Uh, but from a very practical point of view, we know that the ocean levels are 150 meters higher than they are now. Now, I just said 150 meters. Do you understand what that means, right? Yeah. Uh, that is 470, 400, you know, let's call it 500 feet higher. Imagine mm-hmm. how far you have to walk out into the ocean for wherever you live to find the old coastline, right? How many miles are you walking to get to that? That's how much of our our, our coastline around the world we've lost that is now underwater in some cases miles out depending on the shelf level uh and under a lot of water right this is this in right. itself we know this is true right and then well it, but when it let me let me finish it real quick just so i can give mm-hmm. a, a good solid understanding and then we can go um all right uh, and now with now we know this is true but yet uh, well, as far as we can know what's true. Um, but yet they don't want to sit down and have a conversation of how that came to be. How did we gain 150 meters of water around a planet? That is serious right. amount of water, right? Right? Yeah. That's one. Planet, Two. planet size for that much, yeah. Yeah. Two, that disaster mm-hmm. created uh, uh, flooding ripples across landscapes, especially North America. Uh, that these ripples, like you go down to the beach, right? And you see ripples mm-hmm. on the coastline. And they're little teeny little things. They're like a you know, centimeter tall at best or what have you. Uh, but you're, we're talking about rip, ripples that the l- people who live around them think that they're small mountains. That's the ripple. That's the level of flood that came across, particularly North America. And I really do like uh, uh, Graham Hancock's uh, uh, theory, and he it's gaining traction, uh, where the uh, there was a giant ice glacier sitting on top, which is what they've been saying for decades and decades, right? And it uh, mm-hmm. the, the weather was warming, and a big ocean formed in it. And when all when we came into that debris field, that uh, we had the, just an amazing amount of meteor strikes uh, across the planet, it cracked that wall and dropped an ocean on top of North America, literally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know this we know this happened. It's just where did the water come from? Uh, but um, it, it this is kind of a basis for us to understand what we're looking at here. This world that we live in has very little uh, to compare itself to the old one, right? Okay, so there's our there's our foundation for that. Uh, what I'm All showing right. here uh, for ancient stuff, uh, uh, based on um, uh, uh, Thundaro's uh, comments here, I'm showing the Osirion. Uh, now, if you guys mm-hmm. have ever heard of this before, this is a thing they found under the uh, Giza. And understand that uh, Giza it, it was built... Uh, of course, it's natural formations, but the majority of the, the Giza uh, plateau is man-made or man-manipulated, if you prefer. Um, it's ridiculous work. People talk about the pyramid. That's nothing compared to what they've done yeah. to the plateau itself, right? And this is uh, this is found uh, pretty deep and uh, a pretty impressive thing that they found here. And they made, the level of technology just unto itself is impressive. So go well, ahead. there are... There are theories, speaking of thunder, there are theories that the reason they did that was some form of power generation, uh, that the ancients had elect, had the ability to generate electricity. They just didn't do it the way we do it. They used stone um, because the what the pyramid's made out of is actually a highly conducive stone. You can actually put electrical currents right through it. Um, it it's one of the only stones in the world like that. It's kind of like salt. You can put an electrical current right through salt. And there's a lot of theories that a lot of these massive structures were basically massive generators that that's what they used to create electrical current because they didn't have quite what we have today and the knowledge we have today to harness it um but they had different knowledge they had knowledge which they used to build these structures in a very um what's the word i'm looking for concurrent like circuit like pattern in the in giza um and there's also obviously there's there's uh what's Egyptian hieroglyphics that seem to show light bulbs all throughout Egypt, all throughout ancient Egypt that seem to show some sort of 
what looks like a modern light bulb being plugged into a socket, very similar yeah. to how ours look. Yeah. So it very well could have been that they had some form of basic rudimentary understanding of electricity. And all these, these structures were designed as basically fact power plants to generate electricity or to store it or to help transport it. Um, and that would explain a lot more than just that they're just simple tombs because that doesn't make sense to me. These are – like look at the size of that stone. These are massive mm -hmm. structures. This is Puma Pum Pum, by the way. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it still applies. The, these are massive structures and to just think that it was just vanity – that somebody created them, especially like Giza, we know is more than just the pyramids, just more than just the few tombs they found there. It is a monstrous structure. Well, let me clarify. Um, they have never, ever, 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 ever found any body in any pyramid. That's right. not, that's not, they, they, they haven't. But this is, this is, some, this is one of those, uh, well, what do you call them? Urban legend type things that uh, people think they're Hollywood, doing. Hollywood fiction. Yeah. Hollywood yeah the fiction. Hollywood yeah, fiction. Yeah, not. They're not yeah. tombs, that's for sure. Um, now, I just wanted to point out the uh, right here in Puma Punku, which is in South America, right? <laughs> and uh, you see, mm -hmm. we still have the these this symbology that's been around with us for a long time. And I think guys just like, oh, it's mm -hmm. Nazis. But uh, no, they, they appropriated that, of course. Uh, but uh, do you guys know what this uh, swastika, do you know what it actually represents? Do you know what the it's sun. for? No, it doesn't. Not the sun, no. Good fortune. No. Um, I know this answer, but I can't think of it now that you ask. It. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know either. Yeah. Well, no, it's a, it is, I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, if you look up at the Big Dipper, all right, and we all can mm -hmm. find that in the sky very easily. You're, uh, you know, it's, it's very, it's very uh, in our face type of uh, constellation. Well, uh, may I don't know if you've noticed this. I don't know how much you guys look at the stars, but throughout the year, the Big Dipper turns like a clock hand. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the Big Dipper does is you can, of course, you kind of would think you would know, but you can look up at the Big Dipper and throughout the year, you can see where its position is like a clock face and know what season it is. So the Big Dipper has always represented the seasons and the swastika mm -hmm. is a represent representation of the Big Dipper in all its positions. Therefore, it represents the seasons, harvest, things like that. Right. Uh, that's what this is. Uh, each little arm coming off the swastika is the Big Dipper in its in its uh, various uh, uh, formation throughout the year. That's what that is. Yeah. Simple, right? Uh, let me jump yeah. over here to the chat real quick and uh, catch up. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Roger Hellis says, hey, guys, uh, how's everyone's Sunday going? It's going great, dude, but it actually is Monday for me. Uh, Dave said, the H blacks, uh, blocks of Puma Punku. Yeah, I'm showing those right now. Uh, Eric Boyd says, is it possible, uh, uh, possibly uh, diverted rivers and streams aided in the conveyance of large blocks of stone for pyramids? I know Egypt is said... Uh, is arid, but uh, wasn't the Nile River different in the past? Well, uh, let me answer that real quick. Um, uh, of course, using water to move things is smart. Uh, like I said, the ancients understood water better than we do, guys, right? Um, and uh, you have to understand that Hawass, who is the boss of Egyptology over in uh, Egypt for a long time, he's out now finally because he's a corrupt bastard. Uh, but uh, that guy, <laughs> do you know what he's been doing this so many past decades? You know what he was doing? Pumping water out from underneath Giza, it, literally for decades, yep. right? And it's like, why are you taking that water out? And, of course, he says because they want to dig down. But then, again, you have to ask the question, why is there so much water under Giza, and how did they make it get there? Interesting, right? Uh, Comic Book Bob says, uh, there's a theory that the human race was reduced to just a few thousand due to the supervolcano. Um, uh, I think uh, there are many theories. Uh, I think the current one, which... Doesn't mean it's true, but the current one that everyone's sticking with uh, is uh, we move the the Earth moved through a debris field, and uh, we just got pummeled with just literally thousands and thousands of meteorites. And there's a lot of evidence for that actually, uh, creating flooding and fires and all kind of stuff worldwide. And uh, uh, that's the general idea of the cataclysm of 12,000 years ago. Uh, Eric Boyd says, uh, I know pyramids have been found worldwide. It's true. I think water played a role in construction, but again, I have no clues, just speculation. No, you don't have to speculate, dude. Every pyramid has water involved in it. It seems to be part of the construction. Uh, Combo Bot says uh, 40 mating 
pears. Ah, Noah's Ark. Uh, Roger Heller says, Sunken City, the whole idea was talked about in the movie Aquaman. Yeah, well, dude, there are, we, there are many cities around the world just off the coast underwater. This isn't speculation. It's true. Um, and uh, last one, Chester is an old Giza. Just saying. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, I'm now I'm a boomer and now I'm a Giza. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Anyway, go ahead, guys. Take it away. Um, the one of the main reasons water it was used so much is because pretty much every ancient culture, in one way or another, worshipped water. They either had a water god or a river god or something to that effect. Um, so that was that was a lot of ceremony involved with water too. Obviously, it was still a giver of life, and still is. Um, so there was a, there was a lot of that, especially because a lot of these sites are considered what we believe anyway were holy sites or religious sites. So you would have a lot of water playing into that, but it's very well possible they used water to divert it, mm-hmm. and Why or not? they diverted water and that helped them move the stone. But some of these stones are absolutely massive and weigh tons and tons and tons. I don't know if they had the, I mean, they very well could have, but I don't know if they had the uh, maritime technology to do that, um, to haul that even on water, because you would have to have the buoyancy just right to carry something that heavy. So, well, uh, next to the pyramid itself and nearly the length of it, uh, was, uh, which is, is a mouthful unto itself. Uh, they did (laughs) dig up a, a ship, dude. A big one, yep. mm-hmm. buried next to the pyramid. So I think they were very a capable. A ship, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, well, and... we also know another another technology they definitely had more advanced than what we've been told is sailing. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very likely that somebody from Egypt made it to, North, to South America. Um, the reason it is is because they found in, I believe it was in a camel, an ancient camel, they found cocoa in its stomach. There's no reason that should have cocoa in its stomach. Cocoa isn't really native to Africa. No. So there's only one real way that could have happened. Either the camel swam across the ocean or somebody sent a boat over there and got it for it. And that's how it got the cocoa. Well, you know, an interesting thing with that um, is the fa- is that, um, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, what they could do. And it's always these uh, scientists' opinion of uh, their data that they've collected. Uh, but they, you know what they never mention Is what did the mm-hmm. Egyptians, or excuse me, the Comitians say? What was their mm-hmm. opinion? Because they tell us all about their culture. They tell us all kind of things, dude. But you never hear the scholars ever talk about that because, oh, that's just silly fantasy. And it's like, why <laughs> shouldn't we listen? I mean, because if we go back and read the ancient people's stuff, they had things that were like, uh, you know, logistical paperwork, you know, receipts and, mm-hmm. and, and documents and uh, bills of laden and stuff. They had those things, right? Uh, they also had things that were historical documentation. And you know what else they had? Stories, right? And you can very yep. easily see them and delineate the which is which. It's not hard. They're written in a very specific way. Uh, so it's, um, you know, but this is a real problem with the uh, uh, with the academia. Uh, they don't want to pay attention. And, of course, the point I'm getting to is if you go back and read what the commissions had to say, well, they travel all over the world. They say it very clearly. It's not hidden history at all. It just isn't mm-hmm. told to you. Um, and not only that, uh, there's a very interesting text I would invite any of you to go and read, uh, The Pyramid Wars. Uh, I've, I know, I've, I'm sure it's been translated from the Egyptian. And of course, other cultures around the Egyptians had accounts of the Pyramid Wars as well, which is interesting. Hmm. That, that would, you would think that would validate it, right? Right? Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, the Pyramid Wars are a really good read because you know what they're talking about in there? They're talking about um, these, these gods, these, these kings, these god kings, uh, fighting mm-hmm. over the control of the Giza Plateau. Right. And uh, when it was all said and done, I'm not going to go through the whole story, but when it was all said and done, the council, you know, the Elohim, all right, Mm -hmm. uh, they made a decision that it was too dangerous to leave uh, that uh, there and they were going to move it. And and what was too dangerous? Well, uh, we don't know exactly what. There's a couple of suggestions, but it mainly seems like from their point of view, from the story's point of view, they were using the pyramids as a communication uh, 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 machine to Mm -hmm. heaven, right? Now, of course, understand at that time, heaven meant space. 
right? These days in modern time, we've right. created heaven to be this dimensional thing. And you could thank the Catholics for that. Uh, but um, uh, they were talking about communicating to their people in space. That's what they say, mm-hmm. not what I say, right? And the pyramid was this giant communication ant- radio antenna of something or another. And it was too dangerous mm-hmm. to leave in because they couldn't defend it well enough. So what they say is, uh, after it was all after this fighting was all done, they took all the technology that was inside it out. That's what they say, right? Now, have you ever heard any historian or any history book talk about that at all, ever? Not a not a not a mainstream one. That's for sure. Definitely not an Egyptologist. No, it's crazy, right? Because this is not my mm-hmm. opinion. I'm just telling you what they said in their stories, right? Right. Right. Crazy. I'm trying to what they're called. But anyway, let me check with the chat real quick, see if anybody has anything to add to this conversation. Uh, I had a nightmare about a super volcano erupting last night. I could fly, but was sad because I was having trouble getting to my cat. Then I woke up. This is from Night Pope. I'm not. Uh, you have a cat. <laughs> awesome uh <laughs> chaotic neutral comics nice <laughs> nice uh nice i love this uh this stuff uh i gotta catch this show more often not to mess with the flow but uh if you see this you ever heard of uh, uh tar tartarian mud flood uh theories yes i have uh it's interesting to think about uh, now this is a much more recent uh, t- uh thing about these mud floods up in the uh in the uh, Europe and such, and um, I think it's very interesting. Although I tend to prefer the theory that these things happened a long time ago, dude. Uh, I actually think the foundations of St. Petersburg are way older uh, than what's built on top of it. Uh, but yeah, that's an interesting theory too. Uh, Roger Heller says so. No crystal, uh, crystal skulls talk. Hey, you never know. Um, uh, Gobekli Tepe, eleven thousand years old. Yep, yep, that's right. Um, uh, I gear something similar to I, I I hear something similar to this on the History Channel on ancient aliens. Uh, yeah, I, when that show first came out, I don't know. Jeez, when did that show first come out? A long time ago, right? Um, right. Uh, yeah, it's been about ten years, probably. Yeah, I, when I, I, I watched an episode or two, I thought it was fun, uh, but I haven't really kept up with it. Uh, I, I didn't even know it was still going on until last week or the week before. You guys were telling me about it. it's still going on. I didn't, you know, and that's cool. I think it's fun. Uh, but mm-hmm. these guys are, are really speculating and real hard, right? Uh, which is what we're doing. So good on them. Uh, but anyways, anybody have anything to add to this one? Because I'd like to move on to the next topic. And unfortunately, guys, we could sit here and talk about this, just pyramids for hours, right? We could. Um, it's in the same vein. It's in Egypt right next to the pyramid. Well, very close to the pyramids, actually. Uh-huh. The only other thing I want to talk about were the great the black boxes. Uh, that were found oh. underground in what appears to be a massive tomb complex or something. But these boxes are monstrous. Um, and they're basically, there's absolutely no way the Egyptians could have made these boxes. The, the carving in them is perfect. Perfection. It's so good. It's as good as anything we could do today with laser cutting. Mm-hmm. That's how so perfectly measured and perfectly smooth you these are. These and things, you can even right? see. Yep, you can even see. You see the top pieces, and then you look at the walls around it. Mm-hmm. Now, those are supposedly done by all the same people, same carvings, but there's no way. Th- those are totally two totally different levels of technology, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it, it's, and they're incredible. They are, yeah. And they have no idea what they're for. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, well, they call them bull uh, coffins. They say they put the bodies mm-hmm. of bulls in there. Of course, they never found any bones in there. But hey, you know who cares about what's uh, real details. or not? Details. Uh, details, right? <laughs> uh, but um, uh, and of course, uh, that's a whole that's a long conversation. I don't want to get into that. It would take too long. Uh, but um, yeah, these things are really interesting. They're, the precision on them is amazing. We've had I, I've seen actual engineers go and measure and look at these things, and they say there's no way you can do that without machine yeah. tooling. No way. No yeah. way. Absolutely no way. Hmm. So, you know, it's um, uh, it, the, these are really interesting things. Uh, obviously, you can see the level of detail in the room compared to the, the, the box itself is incredibly mm-hmm. different, as, uh, as Thundera has mentioned. Uh, but the, once again, this is w- w- why I was showing the Osirian from the beginning when he was talking about that. I chose that because the Osirian is kind of a deep layer. 
And the thing mm-hmm. is, is when you go to Egypt and you start digging down the layers, the tech, the 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 the, the ability and skill with stone cutting and stuff, it, it gets much much better. It's ridiculous. It's the opposite of lo- what logic tells us should be, but it does. The deeper you go, the more sophisticated it is, and it should not be that way. It's the literal opposite of what our history would tell us is true, because you know we're the most right. amazing things that have ever existed in the history of humanity right now, right? Oh, of course, of course, we are the best version of humans ever to exist. That's right. Just ask us. We'll tell you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The other – let's leave out the fact that the other versions of humans don't exist anymore, so they don't get a say. We're just going to go with us. We, we're number one. Oh, look at that. Look at the precision. <laughs> just so this t- this uh, yeah. this uh, edge square here. So it's impressive. It's, it's well perfect. To say that um, they would counter, you know, hey, the difference between them and us is we survived. They haven't. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, well, yeah, and – if something as yeah. cataclysmic has happened to them, happens to us, we're not going to survive it either. <laughs> right. But that's what I'm saying. It's that, you know, until that, when that happens, because, you know, we are due for one of those, we're overdue, unfortunately, based on the history of this world and mm-hmm. what uh, geology and science been telling us, we're overdue for another disaster um, to hit us hard. Um that's true. And, yeah. you know. I like so. this the image I'm showing right here real quick. Uh, because, you know, mm-hmm. like, like I said, that these things up here uh, were supposedly where they would put sacrificial bulls in. Right. That's what they're, mm-hmm. they say they're for, which I don't know why, but that's that's their their reasoning. Right. Um, and uh, because some of the katushas uh, that are uh, sitting here on these uh, on these boxes are talking about sacrifices and gods. But, of course, this has to do with eras of time and uh, reigns of pharaohs. Uh, it's not right. uh, actually about you know living actual bulls. Uh, but nevertheless, this this one is a good image because uh, look at it. You know, the, you can see other ones too. When they would take animals and mummify them in a sacrificial manner, uh, they usually took the shape of the animal. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at it, right? Yeah, absolutely. They wanted to preserve it as pristinely as possible. Like, look at living. this one. That look at the, the shape, of. the human shape, right? Mm-hmm. Why would they just suddenly decide to just do giant boxes that are unbelievably precise in their precision? Mm-hmm. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah, it, well, it would have to be for something very important. Otherwise, why put the mm-hmm. uh, the level of uh, work involved? Uh, but <clears throat> right. anyway, that's interesting. Uh, so, uh, any other comments on this before we move on to the next uh, topic? Nope. Go ahead. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, who's next, Denali or Todd? Which one do you want to go? Well, let's go with my idea of the. Uh, okay. I talked about um, the giant skeletons of humanoids. All right. Or as there you, you call go. them. All right, so let's uh, just type that in. Giant skeletons. Ooh, I can type. Uh, now, uh, I know there's going to be a bunch of fake photos here, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, we'll just, because these are, a lot of these are fakes. Uh, they actually had this uh, this thing uh, years ago where they were doing this uh, kind of um, graphic design project and uh and, and a lot of that came out of that uh, unfortunately but uh, this right here is real uh as far as this image on the left uh this is a photograph now you look at that right there that's a nine foot tall uh female right mm-hmm. right um you know so uh now uh, i i will hold my opinion on this because i actually have uh i do have information on this uh but i will hold that oh. uh until you guys uh you know, go through your opinions on it. So go ahead, Todd, tell us about it. Well, I think when I saw, you know, just looking at skeletons is one thing, because like you're saying, some of these pictures might be fakes. No, some of these are. might just be regular size skeletons. And then the person is shrunk next to them. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But what, what I do know that you have is a few like, like full femur bones that are humanoid that I've seen. And I also know that you see a lot of, like you talked about the, the paintings and art, art where you would mm-hmm. see uh, normal sized beings or humanoids next to a larger 
person in, all over Europe in their hieroglyphs and stuff like that. That's true. So th it, it wasn't like they were depicting they were de they were depicting of just a larger size man. Mm -hmm. They were you know sometimes you would see like the head of uh, uh, of a goat on the person or whatever, but you see a lot of that. But a lot of times you would just see uh, this particular huge person working alongside normal sized people. That's right. In, in those pictures, so I, it's it's a little uh, confusing, um, but I, I'd love to hear what truthful information you have about it well and i have i do have actual information uh but uh, uh let's let denali and uh todd uh, weigh in on this topic before i do you mean Dundaro? he does yeah <laughs> no i'm sorry i do uh, uh, <laughs> my brain is calculating and preparing okay okay give me a break i'm a boomer <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Tundaro. <laughs> um, it's it, it's interesting because pretty much every ancient culture that we've discovered that we know for a fact had any form of storytelling beyond just basic oral traditions, even some of those, but had, you know, uh, whether it be uh, pictographs or actual language, some form of storytelling that could pass down to the ages, pretty much all of them had giants in it. Um, and I always say pretty much because I, I'm sure there's probably one that wasn't that I'm not thinking of, but as far as I know, it was all of them had some form of giant depiction. Now it, it could be the same thing as, as we talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, it could just be, that's what, that's just people imagining the same thing. And that's why it comes up. But I think that's one that's boring. And two, I don't think that's reality. I don't think people just imagine things. People are inspired by things. So the idea of giants is at some point, I genuinely believe there were what we would call giants walking on this earth, a different form of human that was just much bigger than what we are today. And we know for a fact, even throughout our history, throughout our recorded history, people's average heights have changed dramatically um, for all different reasons, but it's, it's happening even today. The average American height is going down from what it was a hundred years ago. So it's not really that far out of the realm of possibility that some form of human or just a genetic defect, whatever, created people that were just huge, that were way bigger than your average person. Okay. All right. Denali? And in fact, I think they've even found, um, it, they found actual, not full skeletons, I think some of those full skeleton pictures are probably fake, but they have found, like Todd was saying, they found bones that were huge comparatively to what a normal human bone would be. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think there's definitely something to this and it's interesting how little mainstream archaeology and things of this nature will talk about it. They just want to brush it off as just myth and fantasy. Right. So my opinion is basically there's been, like you mentioned, there's been a lot of stories throughout many cultures um, that deals with that. One of the famous stories is Gilgamesh, which says he's like about 18, 32 feet tall. Um, and the same thing with his friend, um, which is uh, Enka, Enkidu, um, Enkidu mm -hmm. about the same size. And they and what's striking is they said all these giants are red haired, red beard um, beings. Uh, that grown up uh, and there's been a story said and you know there's some found here where they said that those grace sites are actually those they're small hills that are mistaken as you know hill, uh, tombstones and grave sites are, are mistaken as small hills and some of them been actually found in New York but they don't allow there nobody's allowed to go into them because they're sacred uh, places uh, for the, I, I think for the Mohawks, there's there's one in New York. I, I can't remember the name of that hill, but if you look at it, it's it, it looks like a great you know like a burial, a big one. And there's a lot of these sites all over the world that has the same structure where it could hold a body. Uh, so they, it's it's very possible. I mean, you know, they found you know, some evidence of giants, you know, 
in human beings and human past, some of our, you know, common ancestors were giants and disappear. So I wouldn't be uh, surprised if, you know, there's a discovery in the next year about this. Okay. That That's it? Yep. All right. Boy, I'm busy today, huh? Um, <clears throat> all right. Where to start? Um, first of all, uh, as far as anthropology goes, uh, we know there are many types of hominids in the past, right? Uh, right. We know about Australopithecus, right. uh, uh, we know about Homo erectus, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, we, of course, we have another one which is commonly called the Goliath hominid. And it was, you know, about eight foot tall or so, seven, eight to a foot tall or more. Uh, and these bones have been found many, many times. And they look just look like a giant human, no different. Uh, but uh, they're pretty deep, though. <laughs> when they're found, they're very deep. Um, but And uh, <clears throat> when we do find tools or things around them, it's very primitive. So, uh, you know, there's no argument from uh, academia that uh, there were giant hominids. There isn't. Okay. Now we come brings us to a curious point of uh, uh, of the uh, archaeology here, uh, or excuse me, anthropology here, in the fact that uh, there's another type of giant hominid that they don't want to talk about. Matter of fact, uh, agencies like the Smithsonian and many of their counterparts around the world will do everything they can to shut it up. Now you have to understand that uh, during the couple centuries that America has been. Uh, you know, the few centuries that America has been there, there have been accounts of giants dug up by farmers, literally hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of them. And they are documented in our newspapers. And there are several uh, books, and I believe there's also documentaries online that you can find that talk about this in a very serious way, not uh, speculative or, you know, I think you possibly could have been aliens. No, no, no. They're just talking about the fact that there is this paper trail, but yet there are no bones. Uh, and it has come to the point with the Smithsonian that finally they have, they have acknowledged it, but they did it in a backhanded way. Uh, because there was so much evidence coming forward by, I can't think of his name, uh, Childress, or uh, I can't remember his name, but it's one of these, uh, these researchers, these alternate history, uh, you know, actual scientists, uh, uh, researcher guys. And uh, he brought so much evidence forward that what the Smithsonian has actually said now is, oh, yeah, but somehow we've misplaced them all. Okay, uh, so uh, so what the, the Smithsonian is doing is they're admitting, yes, we have been collecting uh, giants from across America for the past so many centuries, uh, and yeah, we just don't know where they are. All right, which of course is nonsense, right? Uh, and, yeah. But the, at least they're admitting it now, so that's something, right? Um, now, of course, every culture on this planet talks about giants. And you have to understand, a lot of times when people think giants, they like Denali just did, they think of this, you know, this 20, 30, 40 foot thing. Uh, but to be fair, most of the actual giants that are talked about throughout history and, and, and witness accounts and stuff like that, we're talking about something 8 to 12 foot tall, actually, in size. Yeah. It's not that big, actually. Um, it's a bit underwhelming in, in, in the, as far as the word giant, uh, but it also is more practical, right? Um, now, mm -hmm. um, I put a few things up here to kind of demonstrate. Now, this is Gil a statue of Gilgamesh, and this is a very classic, uh, uh, if not modern, view of Gilgamesh. Uh, but um, uh, you got to keep in mind here, take a look here. This is a Sumerian creation myth, and we have these gods, these alien gods, uh, and that's a human that they have just created. This is the Bible story you know of God taking the the the, the clay and forming it, breathing air into it, right? Here mm -hmm. you see uh, for them it's a clay vessel that the essence was mixed in and, and therefore they birthed it because this goddess actually carried the essence in herself, therefore she gave birth to it, right? That's the Sumerian tale. Uh, if we come over here to the... Uh, the Egyptian or Comitian one, uh, here we see a little bit more of the breath of life, which you see the, is in the, the Torah and stuff, uh, the mm -hmm. Abrahamic uh, beliefs, you know, breathing life into it. But once again, these gods are very big compared to these humans, right? So one, uh, the idea right. of giant, uh, gods being giant is a, is a very common thing. Um, and there have been actual times within recent history of uh, photography, like this one, 
uh, of uh, actual giants. They're, they were going around like circus. This is a circus fair picture. <laughs> Uh, people, you know, circus just traveling around the country, and they'd have a giant, right? And we know some things are cheated, but uh, uh, the, some of these things have been very well documented, actually. Uh, but uh, giants are not a hidden or strange thing whatsoever. Uh, the problem is, <coughs> when we get to this specific type of giant that they keep wanting to hide, uh, is, is what the appearance is. All right, and I'm going to make a couple of connections real quick here, and, and then we'll try to move on from it. But um, one they're giant two they have six digits on each appendage right uh three hmm. they have a double row of teeth so it, whereas we have a row up top and row at the bottom they have two at the top and two at the bottom which is odd unto itself isn't it uh but this hmm. is a common thing all the way across with these the other common thing is the red hair Right. And uh, we have found uh, uh, skulls with this kind of hair and stuff. And this has been um, uh, has been tested. And it is a type of red that no other human carries. It's not a human type of red hair. It's a different uh, a different color of red. Uh, and it also is a, it gets there in a different way. Uh, so it's a it's a not a human red. It's a different kind of red. Um, and. Um, you know, these things have been found here and there, and a few people who had money were able to do DNA testing, showing that they are similar to human, but different, right? So an ancestor, possibly. Uh, and then mm -hmm. if we listen to the stories, uh, we know that, uh, say, from the Sumerian stories, for instance, or the, or the Babylonian ones, let's go with that. Let's go with the Babylonian stories. Uh, you had the gods, and you had the uh, the uh, the Igigi, or the EGG, right? And the EGG were uh, kind of servants. Uh, in the stories, it kind of gives you an, an understanding that they they were either created themselves or they were from another place that they were conquered by uh, the gods and taken as slaves and eventually given freedom. It's a bit confusing. Uh, but we know that they're different. But they're said to be giants with red hair, whereas the gods are giants with light blonde or you know even white hair. Right. This is why you see the gods depicted with white hair so much, uh, because all the ancient colors, cultures, even Africa, you go to Africa, right? You would imagine their gods would look like them, right? I mean, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. make, make God was created in our image, right? That concept. Uh, but no, they're not. They're, their gods are giants with uh, light white hair and light blue eyes. Now, why would Africans, hmm. black Africans, have gods that look nothing like them? Why would Japanese and Chinese have gods that look identical to them, right? Uh, to the, what the description that is gave. They don't look anything like them. I mean, and you go all over the world, you find the same thing. You go down to the Aztecs, right? The, you know, the, uh, we seem to know so much about the Aztecs. But yet, when the conquistadors came over, they treated them like gods. Why? Why? Because they were white. They had, some of them had light eyes. And some of them uh, had red hair. Right, because their gods were light-haired and red-haired with light eyes, and they were giants. Right, uh, this is a common thing all over the planet. Now, I mean, I could talk on this subject and get really deep. I'm not going to though. Uh, but the um, the thing is, obviously, they were giants. It's clear. Um, and, so here's a question, yeah. Jester: Why would they hide the existence that there was giants in the past? What use or what damaging information would that be, you know, if the public knew, oh, well, by the way, there were giants in the past. Well, let's speculate, no. because the, the mm -hmm. Goliath type, the, the more primitive hominid, they have no trouble talking about whatsoever, right? There's whole books on it, right? Mm -hmm. But yet they won't talk about this type. So is it simply a, a matter of a homo sapien superiority, it, you know, something <laughs> as simple as that, or... Is it, you know, and the fact that they hide it makes us think it's more. Because you got to think, we have documentations all throughout history. It's not just ancient time. You do realize that Julius Caesar was supposed to be like seven, eight foot tall, right? Nero was mm -hmm. taller, right? Uh, many of this, the Roman Caesars were giants. And no one talks about that. The move, Hollywood certainly doesn't. But if you go read the, the documentation, understand the Romans were pedantic as hell, right? They yeah. were not like the Greeks. The Greeks loved to write uh, fanciful, fanciful stories and allegories. The Greeks loved that. The Romans were not. They were pedantic yeah, the, and boring, like Vulcan-like. They were. Yeah. 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 They were very logical and to the point of 
yeah. just, it sounded like they had a mostly a boring life, to be honest. Um, I would think that, it, like, like we can take it even beyond giants. If, imagine if we did find hard evidence, somebody did find, I'm sure somebody probably has, that there was an ancient civilization that was more advanced than ours, and they could prove it. Do you think, I, I really don't think most of academia would get let that knowledge be put out there. Yeah. Um, for different, differing reasons, one, because of the ramifications of religious and the destabilizing effect it would have on religions. But two, um, it would also be, it, it's a pride, like you, I think it's a pride thing. You know, we, we like the idea that we're the most advanced version of humans to ever exist. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes that idea, even if they don't know it. Um, whereas if you think about if we're not, well, what does that mean? What, what is that? What caused us to not be? Why are what, what happened to humans in the past? Why are they different? It could be the exact same thing with this, because there's no not really an evolutionary reason why a giant race of human beings would disappear that we can think of other than maybe people slaughtered them. Um, mm -hmm. Because why? Why would they? Why would they go out? Of, why would they go out if they were there before? Well, why would they go away? It's even more insidious than that, dude, because. If you look at all the original stories from all over the planet, once again, this is kind of one of those universal cultural things that tells us we're all coming from one, either we're all come from one point and spread out mm -hmm. across the planet, which is certainly possible, or we all had similar experiences, right? Because right. the one thing that is consistent is we were created, we were adjusted. Now this, uh, the modern Christian take where, uh, you know, God literally took clay and literally breathed life into it and, 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 and created this uh, being to look over his garden, to serve him in his garden. Uh, this is a mm -hmm. very soft and very uh, political pro-human take on it. Uh, because when you mm -hmm. read the older documentation from all over the world, it's very clear we were created as a slave race. Yeah. Very clear. Right. That's what they said. Now you say, well, it's just ancient stories. Well, maybe it is. Uh, but why does everyone in the world agree? Why do you go down to uh, talk to the aboriginals in their dream time and they have the same story as the the the, uh, you know, the crow up in uh, in North America? Why is this? Mm -hmm. Right. It seems odd that we would have this universality in the concept that humans are created as servants or at worst slaves. Right. And uh, slave revolts are a thing that do happen. Yes, very much so. And maybe maybe that maybe that's what it is. Maybe they do. Maybe somewhere in some archives somewhere they have this evidence that mm -hmm. proves that 100 percent scientifically, not just stories somewhere. They've proven it. Right. They have the evidence and they just don't want that to get out. No. Um yeah, for and the course, purposes of uh, all different reasons, ego. You know, it would destabilize the world. I mean, it would it would have <laughs> massive ramifications if everybody realized, hey, all religions are bullshit. They've all been lying to us, and now what? Now what do we do? Well, um, do you have you know, any idea the kind of victim card that I could pull if I said that my people were slaves because we were all slaves? That'd be so awesome. <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> uh, but here, here. We haven't really d d uh, dived into the actual deep conspiracy theory of it, though. And let's take a let's dip our toe in there, shall we? Um, uh -oh. There is a whole group of people who believe that the gods are still here and they control everything. And the reason they hide these things is because they, they want to keep us asleep. <gasps> kind of like that movie we watched yesterday. <laughs> um, and uh, there are actual people who put out photographs of supposed gods like Marduk actually walking about as a human. And I'm trying mm -hmm. to find some of those pictures. Uh, of course, Marduk was one of the big ones, right? Um, but what do you guys yeah. think about that conspiracy theory that the, uh, the gods are still here? Uh, you know, these these ancients, wherever they came from, um, the trans -dim dimensional aliens from another planet, or maybe just an older type of human that grew up before the rest of us. Maybe it's as simple as that. Right. Um, uh, what do you think of that uh, theory that they're still around and they control every little detail of everything that goes on in the world? Um, I mean, it's possible. Anything's possible. But it's uh, it would make a lot more sense as to why so much of the ancient, and truly ancient history, pre, really prehistory from what we understand, is hidden, and why it's it's denied so fervently. Like Egyptologists, Egyptologists have denied fervently some of these theories about the pyramids, like with a passion that doesn't even make sense how fervently they deny it. Um, including Hawaz, like you were talking about, I've seen him supposedly going to do a debate with some people who brought these things up. 
actual doctors and things, and he won't do it. He absolutely refuses to even talk about it. Yeah. And it's weird how much like closed mindedness they have to it. It's almost like there's an ulterior motive. So, no, no, you would think that's the problem, right? Um, I, I do love how they had this picture, which looks like, kind of like a normal old dude, and then it became this picture. <laughs> this picture, this picture, this picture, this picture. And you notice that on the wall, there's real security sitting next to this guy. And then over here, we have some Egyptian eye. They, you know, okay, come on, guys, come on, do better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, John? I think that it's it's kind of um, it's one of those things that's comforting to think that there's somebody out there that's controlling everything because it's really hard to give credit to the actual human race because there's so many things out there that are in the works. Gears are going around and and simply the fact is we don't understand the majority of it and it, it, it's easy to go to the I, I don't believe that it's a simple you know group of humans can be this efficient at controlling something. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, you kind of go to the uh, the the other direction. I, I just think that we're not giving humans enough credit. No, I I, I agree, and I, and I think if you if you go historically and you take a look, um, I think you have two major powers in the past that are still influencing things today, right? Uh, one is the whole the uh, the Holy Roman Empire. It still has huge influence in the world, and the other one is Babylon. Uh, we a lot of people like to think that oh Babylon was destroyed by you know uh, Alexander. It's not true. Babylon continued for a long time after him, um, and uh, had huge influence. And matter of fact, uh, this is uh, I guess put as a conspiracy theory, but it's not really. Uh, every ruling house, every every aristocracy in Europe can trace its lineage back to Babylon. All of them. Right. So you have these two powers. You have the houses of Babylon and you have the houses of Rome still influencing our modern world. Uh, and this is, you know, going on the past couple of a uh, couple of millennia. Um, and it doesn't shock me that money and power continues. Right. Because, you know, a lot of people, you know, think about these nouveau rich like uh, Hollywood celebrities and such. Uh, this is just raw cash. Right. This has nothing to do with actual wealth and power. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about wealth, you're talking about land, the owning of land, and you're talking about gold. And some of these yeah. groups, the, the amount of land they control and the gold they control is ridiculous. Uh, like, <clears throat> for instance, uh, people love to talk about the Rashal family, right? It's a very popular mm-hmm. conspiracy family, right? Uh, but here's the thing. Mm-hmm. We know, we know uh, that the land that they own around the world and their actual liquid assets is 500 trillion dollars now you do realize that is more than the gdp of this planet yep all right so uh, who cares what conspiracy you you want to come up with about that about them that in and of itself and we don't even know what kind of actual gold reserves and stuff they have we're just talking about liquid assets right so yeah absolutely um the, the truly powerful their bloodlines are ancient like it's it's very interesting when you get into that kind of stuff um, yeah. how far back some of them go all the way back to Egypt and, and probably farther, but Egypt is about as far as we can trace it and how long they've stayed in power mm-hmm. through generations is unbelievable yeah. well, in all honesty, it's a testament to to their ingenuity, to their family's ingenuity mm. that's true, uh, they tend or not to they tend not to go want. past Babylon though that's an interesting little thing because you say, all right, well, let's trace it back to Egypt, but they don't. And I think the reason why is a couple things. Um, you know, when, when we talk about the exodus, uh, you know, f- of the Jews from, uh, uh, from Egypt, <clears throat> well, we actually have extra biblical accounts of this, uh, but it's not the same thing, right? Uh, the accounts we have are not about some poor little shepherd people uh, leaving. What we have is an accounts of uh, Akhenaten, uh, you know, trying to shift things, and them going to and the temple uh, priests and other pol- pol- politicians going to war, having a big old huge war, and a, a stalemate coming out. And then in the end, Akhenaten and his people left. He is Moses, 
right? He is the mm-hmm. historical Moses, and the he you know the Egyptian Pharaoh, you know, uh, the the you know one of his grandchildren being uh, Tutankhamun, right, and uh, his daughter mm-hmm. being Scotia, you know, Scotland is named after her, right? Um, uh, uh, and he they left and they took all the gold of Egypt with them, right? And you know where they went? Well, it's the same place the Bible tells you. They went to up into Israel. And they established a new home. And oh, but they didn't. They didn't stay there. Many houses split off, guys. This is the thing people don't seem to understand. Uh, when they talk, when we talk about uh, Persia, you know, Babylon, uh, Persia, uh, and the time where they they crushed Israel and they they took all their nobility and, and scientists and all their smart people uh, in for thirty years and kept them in captivity. Um, people don't seem to understand the Persian leadership is not Persian. The Greek rulership uh, leadership is not is not Greek, Roman, etc. These are all Hyksos, right? They are mm-hmm. the the rulership is not the same race as the people they ruled, and I don't know why people can't get this through their head. They don't understand it because uh, they're all Semitic in the in their appearance, right? He said Hyksos, right? Like I'm supposed to know what that is? <laughs> uh, you would pronounce it Hebrew. Oh, there you go. You see, Chester? <laughs> they're all Jewish. They're all Jewish people. You can make it. You can make it easy on everyone, Chester. You I don't do apologize. Like but I mean, this is <laughs> these are these are very very valid points I just made, right? Uh, and mm-hmm. they're things that people don't talk about because they get so caught up in, especially these days, they were like, that's cre- that cut from appropriation. Now go to hell, you bastards. You read your <laughs> damn histories, you know, go do a little bit of research, go to a library. Yeah. Don't talk to Mrs. Smith, your ninth, uh, ninth grade uh, history teacher, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> or your, or even worse, your gender study professor who's telling you it's cultural appropriation. No, it's called culture, dummy. Yeah. Every culture has been appropriated from somewhere else. Of course. What are you talking about? Uh, but the the point is, all across uh, the except planet, for uh, except for Mexican culture, except for that, yeah, except yeah, for that. that's definitely uh, but, original uh, culture. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but all across the planet, the leadership uh, tends not to be the same race as the people they're ruling. Um, and uh, I think the reason they don't like to talk about this, especially these days, is because we're talking about Semitic people. Uh, and mm-hmm. although they used to be set quite separated uh, from what you would call white, they are not anymore. Mm-hmm. They just get thrown into the mix. They're all white now, right? Uh, but the Semitics have been ruling for a very long time. And if we follow them back, the Hyksos, if we follow the Dragon Lords, right, of Egypt, and if we follow them back, we know that they're Scythians, right? And the Scythians are, of course, originally from what we would call modern-day France, right? Um, so it's a, it, you know, and this is, you know, it's just something that they don't want to talk about now. And then it brings up, for me, it brings up the fair conversation of, well, do they not want to talk about it because uh, it, it, it interferes with some money-making they're, they're doing, of some book or their tenure or whatever or is it the conspiracy that they're still in charge uh no matter what their mystical or supernatural uh, aspects of them just simply humans that are in charge of stuff and they they refuse to give it back uh, any kind of control to the rest of us uh you know it's mm-hmm. it's a fair argument right absolutely yeah when people uh, are irrational in their protection of things it it's going to always make people question why why are you why are you irrational in this i love it i searched the giants and i got a stupid football team <clears throat> damn giants i hate giants <sighs> that's ridiculous giant people <laughs> Yeah. And this is a fair thing <clears throat> that you made this comment a little while ago. We still see giantism pop up from time to time in in mm-hmm. us, right? Uh, and, of course, there are some famous pictures here uh, of from some very famous tall people. And, uh, you know, uh, it's a great conversation. But once again, I mean, we can't we can't stay on this forever. Uh, so uh, mm-hmm. anybody have some closing comments on giants before we move on to the next topic about hidden histories? <laughs> nope, nothing for me. Okay. All right. Think you clear it go. All right, Denali, lay it out, man. What's your uh, what's your hidden history you want to talk about today? Well, <clears throat> we kind of actually talked about it at the beginning of the show, which mm-hmm. is the twelve thousand uh, year event. 
which is talking about ancient civilization. Uh, one of the very uh, theories that's coming today that about 12,800 years ago, the there was the earth was struck either by a meteor or by a comet um, at the North America um, age, um, ice age on the North America's uh, Canada. Yeah, the YDB field. And if you look at this, the water and everything beforehand was, I think you said 458 feet higher. That was lower to that level. Um, and you see it throughout those continent, a layer in the geo, uh, uh, geographic or the geo lines where the geologists are looking at. There's a <laughs> ring right there at the 12,000 um, level where you see it completely different. You see uh, that sudden impact where you see, you know, Wolf uh, Willie Mammoth, you know, broken bones, like they were just struck by a super force. And if you look at, you know, if you start looking at things, you start seeing upheaval. And if you look at North Africa, um, you would see um, the it different from what it was today, where the, where the Sierra is was actually underwater beforehand. And because of that sudden impact and the ice melting, um, it caused the land to rise up and it's scientifically proven because we see it today with Antarctica with these ice melting right now. The land is actually growing up like about four inches each year. Yeah. So if you if you see that for about the same time and you move that lower the continent of Africa by four inches for eleven thousand years, you would get the north part of uh, Africa underwater, and. Um, part of it, you want to see the uh, Eye of the Sierra, uh, which I was mentioned before, which is a lot of people are starting to think that that was um, Atlantis. actually Atlantis. And it would make sense because every every map, ancient map that was coming there um, has the three rings. It's uh, the north part of the is the uh, mountains it connects to an ancient river which used to be part of the nile mm -hmm. the nile actually came to that location and they assume that the hieroglyph of the eye the eye of the horse is actually the same hieroglyph of the eye of the Serera. because if you look at the landscape and everything from a satellite view it matches up with the same things let saying me, that they're let me translate that for you guys. What he's trying to say is the eye of mm -hmm. Horus is the same as the eye of the Sierra. Okay, go ahead. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So let me translate. Um, it's not Sierra. It's Sahara. Sahara. That's Correct. true. Thank you very much. See, he confuses even me, John. <laughs> <laughs> the eye of Sahara. So, um, and they also mentioned that Egypt is actually a colony base of that. So, and what's crazy is because of all the internal terrorism and danger, not a lot of people are investigating that, but from the little that's been investigated, it matches up to the accounts that's been, you know, mentioned by Plato's and some others who well, have been counting. That's interesting. Yeah, and of course, all across yeah. Northern Africa, there's also ancient dams. I mean, truly ancient dams that no one understands why they're there. And you don't hear people mm -hmm. talk about that right. either. Right. I right. mean, gigantic stone dams are all across northern Africa. Uh, but uh, there is right. one little point that I should make here. Uh, I did bring up a pre Ice Age uh, uh, map showing all the red here would be la would actually have been land, not water. Uh, we lower it. And of mm -hmm. course, I'm not showing the uh, North or South America. But uh, the reason I chose this one was because I want to demonstrate because I, I kind of knew you were going to go that direction. So I want to demonstrate something to mm -hmm. you. Um, now, uh, we know. Uh, from geological aspects and also historical accounts uh, that uh, during that disaster uh, uh, or, uh, there was uh, many meteors striking the earth, <clears throat> but one really, really, really big one hit, I mean, a gigantic one hit right here in the, in the ocean, right about here. All right. And when that hit, what it caused was, uh, uh, tech, uh, uh, you know, uh, ground rippling and you can see it, right? 
Um, and this ground rippling caused the entire uh, Saudi Arabia Peninsula to lift. All right. Now, if we actually account for this uh, Saudi Arabia actually being <clears throat> at its old position, it actually almost completely would be underwater. <clears throat> because it lifted quite a bit, and this caused lifting all across the the the, the, the west side of Africa as well, uh, to a point. And if you actually adjust for that, it shows northern Africa having lots of rivers and a lot of waterways, not just the Nile. Um, and uh, it makes right. a lot more sense now that there was so much damming and uh, so much stuff and so much because it, it, it makes it a very water based place. But that lifting mm -hmm. of it sitting on the equator caused the uh, and, and various devastations and fires uh, created this desert that we have today. This is a geological point of view, by the way. This is not um, a conspiracy one. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah. Yep, ancient uh, copper mines in uh, Michigan. That's right. The Romans were over there uh, mining. <gasps> what? They were in the the Americas? No. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like the eye of the Sahara, though. That uh, it is a very interesting thing. But I'm kind of curious. How big is it, though? Let me go check that. Uh, what's the measurements on that? I believe well, why it's twenty. That since a lot of people seem to think that kilometers. that's actually Atlantis. There's also another theory I've heard for Atlantis. And that Atlantis is actually South America, and that the because it talks about in the um, whatever the one that Homer talks about with the Atlantis is it the Iliad or the I can't remember it's one of those but wherever he talks about the Atlantis, it talks about kilometers. how it's wow. it talks mm -hmm. wow that's pretty big it talks about how it's basically a big city with a bunch of canals and riverways running into it like mm -hmm. they were saying, um, well when you look at South America from especially from the top. That's exactly what it looks like, except for obviously it's, you know, Atlantis was supposed to be more than just a city. It was supposed to be a whole continent. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what South America would look like if you were sailing into it. Because that's all the, you know, obviously you have the Amazon, but you have a mill. Yeah. There's like a, a ton of other small rivers that feed into the Amazon from the ocean. Yeah. So and that's people... one. Of oh, the yeah. Name one. <laughs> I don't know that my name. Sorry. The but Empire. I know the Amazon. <laughs> the Amazon. Uh, but but no guys uh you got to keep in mind a lot of people uh, people always focus on the city but in this in the re uh, recount of uh, uh solon that plato is giving um yes. he they talk about the 10 kingdoms of atlantis and that is just yep. like a center capital governance city right um, so it's yep. way bigger than simply a little three ring city, which may well be 40 kilometers wide. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, the thing about <laughs> South America is really interesting that I'll interject. Uh, there is an area in this, in the middle of, uh, South America, uh, that, uh, has very similar type of, um, layout to the story of Solon. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, or I should say the Egyptian priest who told Solon the story. Uh, but uh, and it also has another interesting little touch. That area, that plain, is in ancient times is called Atalan, right? Which means, uh, which means place of uh, or place of copper or red copper. Now this mm -hmm. is extremely important, I think, and interesting uh, because one of the things in the account of Solon is them and, and many other, uh, you know. Uh, conversations beyond this and we've actually found this stuff by the way in recent times in a uh, in, in a well, archaeological uh, dig uh is oracolum now oracolum is um this mythical magic metal of the atlanteans right and mm -hmm. it's uh, basically some kind of form of reddish copper that they could do amazing things with. So it's interesting that we have a place called the, the Red Cop Place of the Red Copper. We have the uh, connection to Atlantis. We have the understanding that uh, uh, of Oracolum and the fact that, ooh, I would guess about seven years ago, uh, they found a wreck uh, in the Mediterranean. It had a whole bunch of Oracolum on it. And they have been studying that like a bunch of little happy uh, rabbits over there. <laughs> it is interesting it i is. think there's a lot of truth to the atlantis uh myth um there i it, it's pretty obvious that there was something more to it than the fact that it was just a myth sure um there's just too many there's too much too much depth to it the fact that it it's it's been preserved for so long and that we keep finding things that point to it being real but we never actually find it yeah. um and Keep it's in mind it's that kind of like when, Troy. 
Troy was the same way. You know, they didn't think That's Troy right. existed for a long That's time, right. but there was all this stuff pointing to Troy, and they eventually did find Troy. Mm-hmm. So it very well could be that there was a, there's some form of Atlantis city thing like that, all that That's out there. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here here's kind of funny. Look where it's located. It's in the nation of uh, Moratitania. Moratania. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And Chester, I, I think you would know what the definition of that would be, right? Mauritania? Yeah. Mm, well, I know part of it. Let's go check it. Yeah. I don't know uh, I don't know the first piece, the back piece I know. Let me go this uh let me let me check it. Here we go. Let's see. A name of a modern nation since 1960, an ancient kingdom of northwest Africa. Also, the name of the Roman province corresponding to parts of modern Morocco and Algeria. From Latin Mauritania, from Greek Mauritania, uh, 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 Mauritania, uh, the country of the Maur- Maori. <gasps> Greek Maori, single Maoris or sea Moors. Okay, so the land okay. of the Moors. There you go. But I think it more? probably goes deeper than that, though. I would not yeah. normally when I would do a, a etymology search, I'd go a lot deeper than this. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, for the for 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 our purposes today, that's good enough. Okay. Yeah. But what's funny about the Eye of the Sierra in the middle of the Middle Island uh, ring, mm-hmm. there is actually a well with fresh water. And if anybody reads about Atlantis, they said the Metal Island has a well of fresh water in there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. the theory. It's cool. Once again, it doesn't. I, I doesn't really matter. I guess uh, it, what's real or not, but uh, it is interesting for sure because there definitely are three rings there. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And it's not a meteor strike, is it? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, obviously not. <laughs> it's lifted. No. It's not in. Yeah. It's this lifted thing. It's not a, a, a cratered thing. It's not a caldera. Uh, it doesn't have that shape. Uh, it could have if you if you. Uh, this is another conspiracy. Th- well, it's not really. Yeah, another conspiracy theory we'll talk about one of these days is the uh, is the plasma universe, uh, the uh, lightning universe uh, aspect, and uh, of course uh, with them and their conversations about and their uh, demonstration that a lot of these markings we see on various planets, including Earth, are actually electrical uh, uh, electrical burns. Uh, this actually follows that pattern a lot more. Uh, than uh, the other uh, the other possibilities. So it's a, either is something uh, that was created by an, an instant effect, or it was something built up, or maybe it was something it's that was created by an effect that then then was used by men, which is a very standard thing. It's interesting that you say that because a lot of the theories about some of the ancient architecture, like we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. is there's a lot of burn marks on a yeah. lot of the stone. It looks like it was yeah. burnt by some extreme heat, far beyond anything they should have been able to, to produce then when these are supposedly have been built. Mm-hmm. So it's very interesting that you say that. I wonder if there's a interlope inter interlapping there or overlapping. That's what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, a theory there that maybe a lot of these structures like the pyramids, which had seemed to be in a lot of, a lot of the theories are they had something to do with electrical current. Um, I wonder if that was part of it. I wonder if they were somehow trying to harness that energy. Possibly. Uh, we do see a lot of ancient stories talking about the gods wielding lightning, uh, Thundero, yes. <clears throat> right? And uh, <laughs> the interesting thing is, if you go and search it, uh, when you look for the um, the lightning of God or the rod of God, let me see if I can find mm-hmm. it real quick. Just uh, maybe easy, a rod of Zeus, probably easiest way to find it here. Uh, it better um, not be porn. It better not be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Um, let me just see the the thunderbolt of Zeus. Maybe, maybe that'll be easier. A lot of the problem, unfortunately, with Google, because they're uh, speaking of the Google conspiracy, they curate everything. You'll find a little bit of everything when you do searches like this. Mm, yeah, I didn't prepare for that. Um... Uh, but anyway, you do a little bit of research, which you're going to find. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Uh, now, this this object, 
we see here. Mm -hmm. um, this is represented as the th the one on the top would be probably, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, one of the lightning gods of Asia or I I Indra, maybe uh, uh, Zeus, what have you. But all over the world, you have these gods that control lightning. They throw lightning bolts. And in the mm -hmm. statues and the, the ancient paintings and drawings and all the stuff of them, they're always holding this kind of object. And it's kind of interesting. Once again, we're finding something very universal. It doesn't matter if you're in South America, North America, Africa, or Eurasia. Uh, even in Australia, we're finding finding this imagery of this thunderbolt of the gods, right? Well, right. It's, it's another connection, right? And these objects right here are, are objects, aren't they? Um, maybe mm -hmm. some manner of technology. And, uh, um, uh, you know, we're getting, uh, we're kind of off topic a little bit. No, well, maybe not. Uh, but um, it is uh, it is very interesting that these are recreations, obviously. Uh, maybe. The one, uh, maybe they're not. Uh, but... Um, it is a fascinating subject when we talk about gods and lightning, right? Well, especially since the Greeks especially imagined the thunderbolt as a real physical thing that Zeus could hold. Mm -hmm. um, and anybody could hold, really. People could steal it from him. That's right. So People did how could steal, they steal it from him, actually. Electricity yeah. from him. Well, they <clears> didn't <throat> steal electricity. They steal the conductor from him. They, they um, stole this, and that's this what this would have been. Object, yeah. So, yeah. But you see, here's representations from all over the world, right? Look at it. Yep. These are different cultures separated sometimes by, you know, literally, you know, you know, thousands and thousands of miles. But yet they have very, very, very similar objects that and that are directly referencing lightning of the gods. And it looks an yeah. awful lot like a fuse, like a modern day bus fuse that you'll find in most heavy electronics with heavy amperage. Now, that's uh, funny. Looks very similar. In fact, that is very is. And I was skeptical as Chester is talking about this. I was skeptical that this is something that was uh, an object that you could that, that, that was throughout history because I hadn't actually heard about this. But looking at these little designed um, pieces here that he has do definitely point out to something that uh, is, is similar across uh, history. Yeah, I would say it's it's very obvious that the ancients all over the world knew about electricity um they probably weren't anywhere near as good at, as we are at using it obviously since we're all talking whoa, whoa, whoa. well who knows but maybe they were more... no, what if they're more advanced well they could have been maybe yeah it looks, when we, we don't understand it, it at this level less by the way we don't understand by it. the way guys when you go look at stir, uh, statues of raiden you know the the japanese uh thunder god he holds one of these in his hands too all right. I've seen well, it. here's an inter here's an interesting thing because you keep saying um, that they were manipulating stone, but remember, a lot of the stones were actually decorated or not decorated. If if we're going with the uh, assumption that they were super advanced with gold wires and copper wires that yep. people over the years have stolen. Yeah. Um, I remember in. A lot of uh, Peruvians had a lot of copper and gold wires throughout their yeah. uh, homes and domains that got stolen by the Europeans. That's right. You know, during their conquests. Yeah, but it's Same just decorative, though. It's only decorative. It had no other purpose at all, especially not yeah. seeing that copper and especially gold are incredibly conductive. No, no, no. Just yeah. decorative. Yeah. I catch Definitely. your sarcasm. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it was talked like, about in the Bible that the finger of God, you know, uh, could would carve things. So yep, that's right. Yeah, yep. and it uh, it also, guys, keep in mind uh, that um, uh, when they were talking about when you're talking about stone and stuff, they the this isn't all the same stone used in these various structures. There are very specific uh -huh. types of stones used in different uh, uh, different uh, uh, you know. Um, uh, configurations guys uh, and we yep. know today with a certain type of stones that, that we can use them for things like fellstone is incredible uh, uh, holder of um, uh, of kinetic uh, uh, force uh, quartz we use it in everything we have right I mean these yep. stones that they're using are very specific and it's interesting that they are the same kind of stones we use for sonics elect uh, uh, electronics or various other things that we can use with stone uh, so they had they understood what they were doing at least in a cursory uh, uh, way and I, I I would suggest it's far beyond cursory so 
Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. You know, when you say gods and things, though, and and you, you well, heck, just thinking about Zeus, if Zeus walked the earth as a giant, mm. you know, as as the Old Testament would have said, um, I would I would ascribe a lot of this type of, of things to the pre-flood earth being a being a young earth creation type. yeah yeah pre-flood earth that was 2000 years of of advancement and development that two yeah. 2000 or more um which now we see you know what what have we done since the time of of uh you know zero zero to now 2000 a.d right we have created a huge amount of different civilizations and technologies so given what given the the, the the whole different mindset thinking just in a different spectrum because you came from the beginning of creation 2000 years later what what is possible and i think this is exactly what we could be talking about here yeah and i and i just want to touch on that before we go beyond it do understand that many of the uh the not included you know J king james bible or or, or or catholic bible uh stories uh especially with enoch and some of those other books that they cut out uh understand that adam and the uh, other ones coming out were considered giants by those the uh, later generations adam was considered a giant That's awful, himself. sure yeah yeah and also smarter i mean if you you consider the fact that they're created god wouldn't have created man like we are today with all of our problems and, and mutations and fallacies right he would have created something perfect so it'd be smarter stronger and better and now we are what we are mm -hmm. yep. it's interesting oh, 30 meters come on you're getting you're getting you're getting, you're getting a little crazy with that um uh, but <laughs> uh, who knows i guess uh, but 30 meters, boy, boy. Uh, but, uh, wow, we've really covered a lot of things. Um, uh, we've covered uh, giants. We've covered uh, the ancient stoneworks. Uh, we've covered uh, the disaster and even Atlantis a little bit here today. Uh, I would say we have just enough time to do one more topic. Uh, so uh, I would say either John or uh, DeWolf, you guys need to choose the next topic for us. I don't have a topic, so DeWolf, go ahead. Wow. Um, uh, you mean things that were hidden from history? How yep. far back in history are we going? Uh, whatever you want. fight you want, dude. No, we just talk. I mean, once again, dude, we could do a series, two-hour series over the course of months and not even touch this topic. I mean, right, it's, right, it's, right. You know, and, and uh, so, you know. Well, I got my easy go-to one, which is... Uh, which, which I mean, okay, so you already did Atlantis, and that also also yeah. covers uh, alien things and uh, ancient ancient things. Well, so we to go less aliens, but you know, so to go so to go less ancient, let's go closer to biblical, and then let's also go to Crusades, right? Okay. So being being a Templar, right, that takes us to the Templar era, and I think there's a lot of things hidden, right? The Shroud of Turin, um, and the uh, the Spear of Longinus. All those things of history, you know, that they got they they've not only been hidden, they they've been hidden away on purpose in some areas, but some of these other artifacts are hidden away. Um, and also biblical texts, right? Like the book of Enoch, right? It was, it was hidden for years. So all of these things point to the power of religion, which we understand that the Nazis even, right? The uh, Hitler, we wanted to get a hold of these concepts that were around in the uh to 1200 to 1400s that romantic era when you when you talk about the holy grail and the magic that all of these items had from excalibur and the like they wanted <laughs> these things. and all a lot of these things seem to have been have disappeared from history either they didn't exist or they've been hidden away for some reason because of what the revelation like we know about like the area 51 and the alien revelation would do Mm -hmm. Right. The concept and the mentality of thinking differently all of a sudden breaking people's paradigms. What does that have to do with the Bible and people in the Bible like the Templars? No, uh, it, um, that's a very fair point. And do keep in mind that uh, the last known location of the uh, uh, the uh, Spear of Longinus was in it was in Vienna, Austria before the war. Right. Yeah. Museum, yeah. The, uh, the, yeah what they believed was it right and of course what that goes back to of course is the spear that pierced jesus's side that's right and the, there's once again speculation on whether or not that was the real one if they, oh, if, sure. if they would keep the real one right mm -hmm. uh this is and an what interesting that little thing i'm showing right here you know, uh, a matter of fact i'm going to uh 
I'm going to enlarge this one, but uh, just for the point you're making, uh, they actually, by all their research into the uh, 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 the uh, Shroud of Turin, uh, they created an actual image of what the person inside it would have looked like. So there you go. That is remarkable. That is cool. So this is actually something that's actually been uh, actually more revealed from history, right? For 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 years, it was um, it was it was hidden. Right. And, and through the fire that it went through, it was hidden away from certain peoples and people groups in order to keep it in safekeeping because revealing it would possibly uh, show that there was something special about this particular piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. And now that it has been held by museums, it's under lock and key, it has actual security. Now we can look at it and see what it, what it has led to, you know. Now, Bullet says, what about the anti cathera mechanism? I am. Uh, I think that's brother. what you're looking up now, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm. More, more mechanisms. More tech. Uh, and of course, now, now another idea behind what, it, what I said was also what led to uh, what was hidden, you know, by and about the Templars because of what we, what uh, we now consider them. You know, they, they were called heretics. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, uh, you know, whether or not they even led to the Masons today and why is that or, it, or is or is not important to modern times as to what would happen throughout the history with the Templars and the Masons. But that actually is another show in and of itself. It is. It is. Uh, and we, we could easily do a show on the Crusades and all the... Uh, all of the conspiracies around it and stuff, of course, particularly the grail. Uh, but those are good points. Those are really good points. Anybody else want to jump in there on those? Any, anything? Cause I threw out a whole bunch of uh, information there. You yeah, did please. throw out a whole uh, bunch of information. There, that's for sure. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll be back in one minute. So you guys carry on this conversation. Uh, <clears throat> you want me to leave it on the image of the crusades or you want to leave it on the image of the shroud? Oh, go to go to the Crusades. Right. And I'm going to ask Thunder a specific question. Uh -oh. So, Thundaro, what would be your spec? Because I know you speculate about this a lot and about mm -hmm. um, conspiracies and, and what they mean to people. What would be your uh, your take on why people would hide uh, religious matters such as this coming out of the, uh, the Holy uh -huh. Lands and the like? It depends who's doing it. If it was, say, the aristocracy of the Catholic Church, it would be for control. To control knowledge is to control power, something they learned very well throughout their years in power. Um, if it was somebody who is a secular person, not a believer, it would be to keep other people from becoming a believer. It, would, it, it's, it just depends on who is the culprit more than anything or why. But the main reason would just be to control knowledge. The more inf knowledge is always going to be power. It always has been. And that's why a lot of these things are kept hidden from people, because once we know more, we're able to do more. And that's something people don't want, especially with artifacts and relics that could potentially prove one worldview right over another. Um, there's a lot of power to be had in a conflict between two opposing worldviews. And the people who control these, the world, really, are perfectly amicable with conflicts as long as they don't come after them, as long as they stay at a ground level. So that's one oh, of the wow, reasons that's a loaded see, statement. That's one of the reasons you'll see a lot of... Uh, back and forth between different religious through different religions entirely the 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 people in the real positions of power the real people who worship their god which is money who control much of the world they don't really care one way or the other as long as their money isn't touched oh yeah yeah that's a good point todd anything Did, or john <laughs> No, I, 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 I would like to know what is the what is the fascination? I, now, I know you know different strokes for different folks, but the thing is, something something like the the Templar Knights and stuff like that, to me, uh, seems to be extremely dry. Why? Because I know you have a, a, a fervor for this. Why are you so enthralled in this? Do you think? Oh, why do why do I like the the Templars and that era and, and what it means? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It um, well, it's a, that is that is a good question to actually nail nail down the reason why. It goes down to what a lot of people um have been searching for actually, and be and be for, okay. It gets really personal. The Templars, the Templars, right? Were <laughs> I got to go straight to the Templars first and foremost because of the Templars' devotion to the faith. 
right? Mm -hmm. And what causes that level of devotion of faith in a time frame where people did not have the belief system that was that was going on because the uh, Christianity was spreading, right? And then mm -hmm. things changed through Constantinople, through the church, um, or Constantine, I'm sorry, and through the church, things changed. And there was a that, that era, I mean, they call it the Dark Ages, but it, it was really a, just a, almost just a time when people just didn't read and write much, right? Um, and so here, here you now you have a, a group of guys, they, they go on crusades, and the crusades got out of hand, basically, for the, for the Europeans. What was supposed to be a, a minor thing, almost like how we uh, in, in America are now have gone to Afghanistan and done war on terror type concepts. It mm -hmm. changed. So imagine imagine today if a group of people, while we're sending over um, just uh, special forces and regular troops and stuff, imagine if a large group of the populace said, we're going with you and got on a bunch of bo hired boats and took over. And now you've got now you got 10,000 people. Right. That is a yeah. level of fervor and devotion to a concept that then got out of hand. Because then, of course, when when all the people got there, they there was some atrocities done. It was just you know, just mass going out there into the Holy Land from uh, by the, uh, the the common the common soldier and the common man because of the sheer fact he was going to be protected when he died. He was going to heaven. That is a huge huge idea. Um, and when people get separated from faith and spirituality, it. Uh, it's it's a great detriment to a society, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so the thing you have to look at when you when you, when you when you talk to him, when I talk to anybody about any kind of conspiracy theory, it's usually a certain kind of person. It, it has is, is geared more towards something like the Loch Ness monster or something like that, or some, some sort of some sort of, some sort of cryptid, you know. And oh, yeah. it's like, it, and I'm trying to, you know, first thing you want to always try to figure out is like, what is the reason for this person's uh, you know, gusto for this particular subject. Right, right. And I just Knowledge can't seem to think of one and not one for the Templars. For, <laughs> That's why I'm interested. Oh, well, wow. well, for, yeah, like Thunder said, knowledge is power. And so what has happened with the, uh, in that, in that crusade time frame, knowledge became at hand, not too long after this, matter of fact, it was just a hundred years after the, uh, the, the Templars were eradicated out of Europe the Gutenberg press came about and everybody now has a Bible in their hands in their language that they can read. And that gave a huge amount of power. And, and the Templars were doing that too. The Templars had their own faith. They had a papal bull. They were their own monks. They were not, uh, they were not under any other bishops or, or uh, cardinals. They were of, of themselves and they had knowledge and they had power. And so to me, that's why it's important because it changes the way even modern people's mindset are. In, in going to, once again, spirituality and faith, because that's true power. Spirituality and faith is, is true power. Knowing where you're going or you're knowing where you came from and having that ability uh, sets your soul at ease, sets your mind at ease, sets your whole, whole body and, and well-being in, in a different context. And right. you can't affect someone who thinks that way. Uh, like with the Templars, when they captured them, they had to behead them. Because they could not do anything else with them because they're always going to continue fighting. They were devoted you to a think, cause. Do you think that that level of confidence in, in, your, in who you are and where you're from translates to, to modern times? Oh, yes. Oh, where yes. People, people that don't have a, a lineage, they can trace back to the old country. That sort of thing. Are they at a disadvantage? I think people are floundering today. Right. Yeah. Well, look at it. I mean, there's a sense of pervasiveness of need of identity. That's why we yep. war towards happening, why this rise of nationalism is happening, whether um why you know both both sides are, you know, fighting for you know, identity of where they are supposed to be because each side is kind of dislodging the traditional roles of where they were or, you know, moving forward for some things. And they're like, you know, you're, you're building a generation of unrest because people don't know who they are or you're making them that 
going so far that you're making them doubt who they are that's you know when you doubt something you start getting afraid and when you start getting afraid you start getting angry because you don't know how to deal with those emotions and mm-hmm. fear and issues there's um, another uh as Nelly was saying, it's it's got to do with identity. He's half right. There's also another aspect of it. You also have people who are fervently trying to destroy other people's identity and tell them that they're wrong or bad for embracing it or liking it. So basically, I'm obviously talking about white people. You're not allowed to like being white or being of European descent. You're not allowed to cherish the fact that Europeans have been nothing but a boon to the, to the technology of the world because that makes you somehow racist. But yet if another person, say an Asian, is is super into the fact that the Chinese were the most advanced people for many centuries, um, that's fine. That's okay. That's acceptable because he's not white, I guess. I don't know. The, I don't understand the logic because there really isn't any. It's just bigotry. But um, that's another reason why you have the rise of things like nationalism and things. And like you was talking about with identity, this is almost a hidden history. You know, the, the fact that yeah. so many people think that uh white identity is is doesn't exist people don't have white there's no such thing as a white people or anything that's nonsense obviously well, um i would rather and, than be called celtic but go ahead yeah celtic european i mean you can mm-hmm. there's a bunch of different names you can give them the reason people use white is because it's the most apparent you look at a person they have white whitish skin i don't know about but, you but i'm pink go ahead <laughs> You, yeah. pink, you pink racist. I know. And um, you think that, do you think, um, just a, a quick aside, do you think that white people don't suffer from the same sort of identity crisis? Because it seems like when there is um, some sort of media that comes out, like a TV show mm-hmm. or a particular wrestler like Stone Cold Steve Austin or, or a TV show like The Sons of Anarchy or something like that, when there's a show that features mainly white people there is a, just an absolute fervor for it it's, they sell out everywhere even in even the lowest stores i i think it's deeper than you're suggesting john <clears throat> actually the entire world is following the celtic path right now everything if you think about the cultural stuff the clothing we wear the stories we tell they're all coming out of the celtic lands all of them uh so in truth uh, if you pay attention as a Celtic person, <clears throat> you should be very confident in yourself. Uh, the fact that mm-hmm. we're seeing so much uh, white guilt coming out of the younger generation here is quite curious. Uh, but I think the question needs to be a deeper one, uh, Thundero, um, mm-hmm. because uh, we do know that the majority of humans are sheep. It just it is. Yes. You know, whether I don't care if you like it or not, <laughs> it's the truth, right? They're and NPCs. therefore, they're following what they're told to follow. So my mm-hmm. question is deeper. Who, uh, with the powers that be, whether they be the uh, uh, European uh, 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 aristocracy or the European uh, um, you know, uh, political elite or whatever, who is it that has made the decision that white man bad and we need to shift away from them. Who did that? Because this is coming from somewhere. Because trust me, these little wackos running around screaming their head off, running around half naked, they didn't create nothing. They don't have the <laughs> intellect to do so. Uh, therefore, this is coming from somewhere. And why? Where's Why the shift? Why the destroy white man? Because, you know, we just had a shooting down in Christchurch, and it's a horrible thing. Mm-hmm. But this dude's opinions are not actually wrong. It's just his action is, right? So, because there is this full frontal attack against being white in the world. It just is what it is. And and once again, I don't care if you agree with me or like it or not, because it's obvious. So why is that? I think it goes, I think it goes back to what John had, had, had said in there. Uh, Maybe he said it with his question. But he, where he said it, where um, about about basically un- the unity aspect, right? Because when you have disparate groups and, and people not connecting back to lineage and things like that, that's what that's what John was talking about. Yeah. Going going back to who they were or a sense of identity and also a cultural identity of, of people. When you lose that and people are now singular and they're fractured, then you lose unity. And we know that unity gives a great amount of power. Like I said with the with the Crusades, yeah. you know. Uh, the Catholic Church, that, or, that unity is power. So if you can break apart all those so-called white people and make them mad at each other, then you can start having control because someone's going to come up and they're going to be the uniter, and that's control. 
Yeah, but my point is, it's the white. It seems to be white people that are doing it. So why would they want yeah. to destroy the authority that white people do hold across the world? Because they do. This whole thing about white privilege, there is a point to be made there. I mean, uh, we don't actually have privilege per se in our day-to-day -day life, but the whole world is influenced by our culture right now, uh, and th and that is a privilege or a power unto itself. Uh, the, so the why would the white is, people be doing that to the white people? The reality is it's been being privileged or being influenced by what we what you would call a white or whitish European cultures for centuries, at least yes. 700 years. Yes. Um, it has pretty much dominated the world. Superculture has been of European ancestry. Yeah. Now it's American, but it's basically European. It's, yeah. um, so why somebody would turn on that? I think I think white guilt is a lack of people respecting honestly respecting just their ancestors their own ancestors that they know of you see because we have it, it where it comes from why it's happening there's a lot of different theories but where it comes from it comes from years of indoctrination growing up in a culture that tells you you're not allowed to be proud of the fact that you're white you're not allowed to be proud of the fact that you're a european that's racist that's bad it's uh, because stupid, you know, yeah, okay. white people have done terrible things like hitler was a white guy you want to be like hitler um hitler believed that you know in arianism and white people were superior and this and that you want to be like that uh, where yeah. that's not the same thing as just true is just having pride how about shaka zulu do you want to be like that bastard <laughs> yes or how about <laughs> that's, Mao that's what i'm Let's talking be about like that that's, why, that's where yeah. we tie this in is that's the hidden history there are people in america who literally believe white people invented slavery that's not a joke they think wow. that's reality they think white people invented slavery that's this is what stupid. i'm talking about there's people who will allow that lie to exist so they can gain power. You know, l let me add a little thing to this to maybe kind of give a bigger picture of the uh, situation. Now, you could say that it just simply is, you know, white people in this past, you know, several centuries that have come up and did all the invention and brought us into this modern world we have. Uh, it was just their time. It was just a matter of luck. They were just the ones that were in the right situation to make that industrial uh, revolution push and to bring us where mm. we are. Uh, sure, why not here? But the thing is, it's actually a return to power, guys. Uh, yes. Because if you go back to, and I talk about northern Celts, I'm not talking about the Italians or, or the or the Mediterraneans. I'm talking about the northern Celts, because if we go back and read the ancient, ancient, ancient stories, the northern Celts ruled everything. They were mm -hmm. extremely powerful, and it's a good. There's a lot of evidence and, and direct uh, story that says they are the ones who actually built Egypt, right? And Mesopotamia as well. So, and they got and they got beat down, and they got pushed out, and they fell into a barbarism and savage times for a long, mm -hmm. long time. And it wasn't until the Roman Empire rose that they started to bring, you know, get back on their feet and come back to where we are today. Right. So, in essence, what you're looking at is a ancient culture that was superior, that fell down and has reemerged, right? Now, I don't know if that helps anyone understand the situation a little bit better, but it's not just this one-shot thing. It's And we can see this across the whole world. China, as you had mentioned, used to be yep. a technological powerhouse, and they fell down real yep. bad, and they're still falling, uh, you can right? Middle East. You can go even to in the last few thousand years. The Middle East, I was going to get to that, but you can go to Rome, uh, or Europe, basically, because Rome basically controlled all of Europe, or the Europe that mattered, anyway. And they had technology far beyond what they had in the middle ages and they had with yeah. when it comes to uh, oh, yeah, uh sure. water the ability to move water around they had working plumbing they had they were very very close to having steam power thousands of years before we rediscovered it and started <laughs> harnessing it um you can go there's a list goes on they had cement that was yep. or concrete that was better than just about anything until a few hundred years ago and actually so it's still list, inferior in many ways yeah, and ours yeah. is still not as good in many ways. Yeah. The list goes on and on and on. This has happened before. Technology has been lost, and it's lost when history is hidden from ulterior motives. Now, whether yeah. it's the Catholic Church doing it by making people dumber so they can have control, or it's some other force doing it, whether it's the Muslim invasions who just didn't like anything that didn't follow their religion, destroying you know Alexandria and things like this. It usually comes back to religious reasons, honestly, sadly. Yeah. But – well. Um, there's a lot of that that's happened, and that's why this is important. That's why hidden history is a conspiracy, because why would they keep information that, that seems innocuous from the public? 
No, there's a reason for that. I have yeah. been, I have had a yeah, and that modern reason. I've had a subliminal message up here the whole time, and I'm very glad that uh, Thunder it it finally hit your brain and brought you to where I wanted you to come. <laughs> um, uh, oh. Of course, you see what I have here up. Uh, this, of course, is the Reformation, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, the Lutheran movement. And uh, uh, the reason why I put this up, the reason I want to talk about it is because it, it is very much connected to uh, another, uh, you know, because I haven't offered my hidden history today. Uh, and here's mine. Um, and it, this isn't so long ago. This is 400 years ago. Right mm -hmm. now, because we've been talking about truly yeah. ancient things here, uh, but I don't want to go that. Let's go. Let's just go back 400 years, just 400 years, because this period, uh, when we talk about the Reformation, all you ever are told about is Martin Luther and his hammering up of his, uh, his, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, his mission statement here on the on the door that I'm showing the image of. But one thing you might not understand about the Reformation is at that period, 400 years ago. There was more war around the world than possibly at any time in our history. I mean, literally, there was war everywhere. Everywhere. There was full-on war. And mm -hmm. the Reformation itself is not really understood by the modern popul uh, the, the standard general populace. Because yeah. the amount of bloodshed and murder and, like, whole, whole like, countries literally on fire... And, uh, you know, uh, the burning of books, the rewriting of history, this right here is a conspiracy theory and a big one. Right. I mean, people always want to go back to the in the uh, Inquisition and talk about that horrible time. And it was a horrible time. But this was much worse. But no one talks about it. Why is that? The amount of murder and death and re in the literal rewriting of history that took place just 400 years ago is outrageous. But nobody talks about it. It's possible if you talk about that then you have to talk about what happened after and and maybe the reformation was was something that helped get us out of all those wars it did it or did it simply was it simply a, was it a takeover that has led us to where we are because i would i would argue that's what happened actually a takeover so a instead takeover. of independent groups fighting something came over to, well, uh, to keep in to, mind, to strangle them together. See, this is another thing that people don't seem to understand. Uh, as Europe stands now and the countries stand now, um, people think, oh, those they, those countries have been the way they are for centuries, thousand years, you know, going back to the Norman invasions. No, they haven't. Actually, mm -hmm. the rebuilding and the border, the creation of the border lines we have today, uh, of course, they've been adjusted by some wars in between there. But uh, in general, that was laid out at this time. And understand, it was the house, the banking houses that gave the money to all the kings of Europe, all of them that created this modern map. People don't seem to right. have any understanding about this. The, oh, the Europe so... that you see today is only 400 years old, only. Not, not even that. Um, the actual current border for the majority of them, barring a few, like you mentioned, for the war, was actually finalized in the end of the first war, war uh, that we had, the Great War. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah. That's true. Um, and then everything that led to the Great War is actually can be led to the Hundred Year War uh, between six, uh, 1625 to six to 17 something before the renaissance where you get to the bankers so everything is tied together on that portion well and, he, and this caused you know like like eric says the the inquisition right there yeah. the, the, what happened afterwards the the rise of uh, christianity breaking apart from uh, catholicism caused great amounts uh, what the merovingians are always brought up in in the in the sure. conspiracy theories right because and they were you know hunt, people were hunted down you know the people of uh, the people fleeing to America, right, in order to get away from more persecution. A lot of persecution happened up, up until um, many years after the Reformation. Mm -hmm. So actually it did not stop, Reformation did not stop wars, but it was a, it was a constant thing that was happening in that time frame. Yeah. Now, well, it wanna, actually started uh, the war because you're dealing with the Protestants and the Catholics, and the Protestant broke up into multiple where you had Lutherans. Oh, back to those Irish again. I'm, Lutherans. Oh, well, poor Irish. <laughs> uh Go ahead. Talk okay, about. I want to answer Dirac and uh, or however you say his nonsense. Dragon. Name. He I want to answer to what he dragon. said in here. Okay, he says Rome had steam power. The reason it wasn't widespread, and you think that it, 
they didn't is because it wasn't invested in for multiple reasons. Rome's emperors didn't invest in steam power because they felt it would be bad for their economy and create huge problems for the underclass, Mm -hmm. which it has when it was reinvented. It's not a major, it's not a matter of hiding anything. It was just a matter of perspectives and it was all technology didn't spread. I understand that. That's not what, that wasn't what I'm saying is hidden. The Romans just decided to move away from it and then eventually they collapsed. What's hidden is the fact that they had it. Nobody knows that except for very few people who are really hardcore buffs about history. And that's why, why does nobody know that? Why isn't that taught in every single teaching of the industrial revolution that it was a well, keep this in mind. Um, uh, it has been. Uh, there's a couple of books I've read on the. Uh, a couple of papers and a book I've read on the uh, subject, and um, um, I have uh, seen it put it put forward very clearly, and I, I agree uh, that uh, Rome could have easily had its own industrial revolution, and the only reason they didn't was because they still had slavery. Uh, if they had gotten rid of their slavery. Uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, went to more, a more capitalistic society as they were shifting, and then there were some fighting and emperor shifts that uh, kind of pushed back on that. Uh, they would have had their own industrial revolution, and we would have been two thousand years ahead of where we are. Oh, it's been awesome. We'd well, be on I, Mars right I now, propose everybody. that it, it, <laughs> the reason why it's hidden is because it is the concept of ego and evolution. So our ego says that we're better than those before us, that, you know, like the Dark Ages were coined, right? And so those people are more stupid. We've always had more and more advances. That's part of that ego. And then, of course, you throw in evolution and the pushback against religion going completely science. The atheistic movement that happened during the uh, coming coming about through the Renaissance era, through uh, which led to Darwin and and all, all the things that he had proposed. And so now we now if we can eliminate God, then God no longer holds power. We hold and and so that we can hold the power, which goes back to the reason uh, of the other reason of doing things, which was taking away people's identity and their reason to exist. If you can take away people's reasons to exist, you can then give them your own reason to exist. Right. So you fracture apart. Right. The whole the whole white concept that we had before fractures people apart. And so now you create a great big power base. And, you know, if you guys have uh, paid attention to some of the other movements that's going on about how we are continuing to evolve, we're becoming better. Uh, The term used is going to a higher vibration because Mm -hmm. mankind is about to witness something new and we're going to become, you know, an enlightened being. I don't know about you guys. When I look (laughs) around, I don't see any enlightened beings coming around. (laughs) Hey, thanks, man. (laughs) <laughs> but what they want to believe is that 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 the the, the past people are, are are stupid. We're constantly getting better, and that makes me feel good about myself that I'm getting better, even without having to deal with a god and a higher morality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is a whole nother conversation, dude. Higher yeah. vibrations, and uh, now we're getting into Scientology. Oof. Right, uh, right. Well, we don't even get into that. But the idea is the idea is that ego and power. Those are what's leading people to hide away the past. You know, we, we find these things about Roman technology yep. and we just go, well, I don't want to think they were smarter than me because I'm better now. So, you yep. know, I, I, I think that must just be something weird and I'm better than you are. Well, it's also if you control the history, you control the future. Uh, yeah. Making sure people only know a prescribed set of, of truths quote unquote about history Mm -hmm. it keeps your mind in a box when i found out that the romans had steam power because i never knew that and i've been a huge roman buff most of my life i just found that out a few years ago it blew my mind it said holy crap how close were we to cracking that egg which obviously led us to where we are now yeah um a thousand two thousand years ago i mean it's crazy how close we've been to it before and we just never seem to break through the wall until recently yeah so it's it, it opens your mind up when you realize how close the ancients were that we know of. There may even have been other ancients that already had these abilities um, that go back further. But we know for a fact that the Romans were right there. They were right on our heels as far as technology. They now, were. obviously, we've blown way past anything they could have conceived. But that was because of the Industrial Revolution. True. And, and understand, actually, just to put a caveat on that, uh, the Greeks were more sophisticated than Romans, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the, yeah, the Romans fire. were much more practical, much more uh, pedantic, uh, much more um, unartistic, really. 
than the Greeks. And that's probably why the Greeks would have never had an industrial revolution because they were always philosophizing about everything uh, where the Romans <laughs> yeah, were about right. getting it done, right? Um, but, um, you know, the, it brings back to the point that I made about the Reformation, right? Because you have to understand uh, that these people who go out into the world and put their careers on the line, to be fair, uh, searching for hidden histories are extremely important, actually. This goes beyond any kind of fun conversation about conspiracy theories, because uh, literally our entire history was rewritten 400 years ago, completely. Right. So people mm -hmm. going and looking and seeing, trying beyond that and trying to find evidence of what was and getting things is very, very important uh, because the history that they wanted to write 400 years ago is not at all what we want to understand about history. Right. I mean, there are arguments and I've heard them. I know it sounds silly, but there are arguments that actually the Roman Empire and all those things that happened or supposedly happened 2000 years ago actually happened only a thousand years ago. Right yep. now, it sounds crazy, right? What? No way, uh, dude. There is evidence, very strong evidence that the, that that is true, uh, and we do know at least uh, in a minimum way, as far as the Catholic Church's involvement in such things, that it is not the year 2019. It most certainly is not. Now we don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. Is it seven years off? Twelve years off? To a thousand years off? We don't really know. I, I would I would want it to be less than that. But we do know this is not the current time. The, the the Catholic Church, at least on three separate occasions, actually shifted the calendar radically. And that's not even counting George Washington's shifting of the calendar. Did you ever hear about that? Or did they shift not. time itself, Chester? <laughs> well, I'm talking about just calendars. I'm just talking. I'm not talking about oh, you know, okay. you know science. I'm just talking about the rewriting of calendars in history. Um, it is it, it it is certainly not the year 2019, and uh, that is you know a whole nother conversation. But it is a hidden history, isn't it? Right. What is the actual mm -hmm. date? What what is our uh, actual you know how should we go about finding that? That's a very difficult thing to do, right? Uh, especially because some of those people who are making the argument that the whole Roman thing was just a thousand years ago. And like I said, it sounds crazy, right? But they good have thing. a good argument. Now, is it a good argument in, in sound theory like the, the, the lightning universe? Or is it a good argument like the flat worlders? I don't know. Uh, but it's, um, it, it is an interesting one. And that would be the ultimate hidden history, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I guess time so. itself was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> what are you? You're showing this this burning of books. Is yeah. is this the burning of conservative comic books by the? <laughs> no, this is the uh, Reformation burning of books. There's many images. Oh, of it. okay. Yeah. I guess I got caught up in my own art, my own thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let me come back over here because I think, uh, you know, we could go on and on, but we can't. Uh, we were kind of at the end of our time here. Uh, so let me come back over to the panel. Uh, stop doing that and do this and then uh, do that. Okay, <clears throat> so. Wow. Uh, Eric says, uh, if George Washington changed the calendar, uh, can we dare, uh, can we date the current year by counting the rings in, uh, of his wooden teeth? Ooh, that'd be fair. Now, uh, I just threw George in there just for fun. Uh, there, his changing the calendar was literally to be of, because of the science of the day, which probably came from Ben Franklin, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, because of the timing of the day, they understood that the the, the solar year was more nuanced than simply 365, 366. And uh, the going back in time, they looked at the, how they should adjust it, and they made an adjustment. Uh, I think it was 11 years or something like that. Uh, but that was actually seemingly for scientific reasons uh, that they adjusted that because they wanted it to be the real year. Uh, based on uh, how, what they understood about the actual movement uh, of, the, of the sun. Uh, so it's a little bit different. Uh, the Reformation was a rewriting of history for control and power, right? Um, and uh, in, in a way, you know, people say, well, yeah, but the, the uh, Renaissance came out of that. The, uh, the amazing uh, growth of technology and, and independent thinking came out of that. Yeah, so uh, was Martin Luther a person who was truly fighting for uh, going back to a truly Christian religious uh, form? Or was he actually the first atheist that was trying to destroy it all? Mm. And we'll what are you part. talking about? Whoa! Yeah. For another show. <laughs> Ding. Wow.
Then you got George Washington, as you said, who of yeah. course would use the Masonic dating system of AL instead of AD. Yeah, that's true. I digress. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but that that uh, I just threw it in for the for the mention of it. That was more of a scientific endeavor, actually. Uh, but nevertheless, whoo boy, conspiracy theories are fun, man. <laughs> and it's actually shocking to me how much we know about them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, boy, it is a lot of fun, and I'm really glad you guys came over came over and stuck with us this whole, this whole time, uh, being in uh, involved in the conversation. Uh, sorry, we kind of got ahead of ourselves in there and all our points we were making and not reading as much of the chat as we should. Uh, but uh, we, de- we certainly love your interaction, and I- I've been keeping an eye on it. So thank you for all your opinions and ideas, guys. Um, uh, also, uh, before we get out of here, I want to do two things. Uh, one, I want us to make a decision what we're going to talk about on next week's TFT because it is awesome. Uh, but I also want to get some final uh, opinions from you guys here. Uh, let me come back over here and uh, bring it up. Now, I had showed you at the beginning of the program uh, that uh, uh, these are from Jay Potts uh, uh, Studios. Uh, very nice of him to send these over. Uh, of course, this one here is the one I created. And the rest of these are from Jay Potts. Uh, we have this one. We have this one. This one and this one. So we got one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, so what I would like is for everyone to tell us which one you like. Uh, and I'll switch the uh, TFT over to that completely uh, as far as the look of it, right? So uh, just uh, put in the chat, and I'll ask the panel as well. Uh, put in the chat either if you want one, a two, three, four, or five. All right. Uh, so what do you guys think in uh, here on the panel? Which one of those you like? Uh, of course, this doesn't really mean anything, but uh, I just thought it'd be cool. And thank you very much again, j Studio, for doing this. What do you guys think? Which one do you like? Five. I like the blue glowy one. Yeah, I you... still say five for sure. Okay. Denali? Yeah, Beowulf says five as well. <laughs> it hasn't changed for me either. Five. All right. That sounds like it's pretty universal. I like five too. I think my favorite is two though, uh, but um, but yeah, five is pretty good too. It's kind of ambiguous as well. It's nice. Yeah, I kind of I kind of would like that the colors were changed just a little bit um, to to be like I don't I don't know if I'm thinking of like a different blue color like Captain Marvel wears or just the oh, eye color of God, Brie Larson. Why, why why do you do that, man? <laughs> why do I do this? <sighs> Well, it looks like five <laughs> because is Because I get that uh, from you, Chester. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Now, um, a couple of you agree with me with the two, but uh, I think we're outvoted here. Uh, five is... Maybe... Yeah, five. Maybe, two, maybe have the fun of five in the background is two. What do you, what do you mean? Did you ask me? I said five two. two. Yeah, I know you said two. No. Uh, but we're outvoted, <laughs> dude. The chat is all five. These guys are all five, so... <laughs> what I was saying was... Have the font number five, but the background as number two. The star background that number star two field. has. Oh, star with the field. star background. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I, you know, I like I'll, it. I like everything about it. Yeah, I like it too. Let me uh, let me talk to uh, Jerry and see if he'll uh, if he can help us out with that. I'll, I'll go talk to I'll go oh, talk yeah, to him about that. Yeah, no, I like that. Take number five. Because it is cool, and put that on the star field background of number two. How does that sound, chat? Because it's, you guys are all saying five and two. Uh, one of you did say three or five. Uh, but uh, what do you think about that? We're going to take the uh, the TFT from five, and we're going to put it on the background of two, which is the star field. I, th- I think that'd be really cool, actually. See if he can yeah, do uh, different colors for the letters too. Just just for because on the blue it might not on the you know the space color it might not look as good. Yeah, I Just will do a, that, and a... I'll bring it back next week, and we'll make a, a more concrete decision uh, on that. Uh, I'm sure uh, Jay Potts will help us out uh, with that. He's a really cool guy. Um, and, uh, of course, we're part of the same team, so it should be pretty easy. Uh, but, uh, all right, thank you guys very much. And, of course, then the next thing we need to talk about, the next thing, of course, is what's the topic for next week? All right, I picked this one. Somebody else picked the next one. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's talk about the Reformation. I put it into the chat already. Uh, so, so chat, go ahead. We're going to start with you guys. Um, well, we could get into the Reformation, but uh, I really doubt that uh, you guys have much uh, understanding of it. 
and it would just be a one-sided conversation and i don't want that uh today was a lot more really involved than usual simply because of the historical aspects uh but and that's fine i love talking about it but i don't want to suck up uh all the conversation you know all right chat right okay yeah throw us some ideas what do you want next week we'll do a little research on it if we don't know about it and we'll uh yeah talk about it we'll dig into it Meat and potatoes of it. Lost oh, weaponry. What did you say? It's like lost weaponry. Oh, yeah. Like weapons are more powerful. Yeah, Greek fire, things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, just, just not just lost weaponry, but other weaponry. Too. F- future weaponry. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, uh, Jonah Art says unexplained ghost stories. Sure. Supernatural phenomena. Yeah. Royal conspiracies. Oh, bloodlines, lizard people, goodness Ooh, gracious. Bloodlines. Now that, that would be a good one. That would be a good one. Uh, <laughs> do you guys know a lot about that? Oh, un- unfortunately, I know too much about it. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is moving oh, into well. David Icke territory. Uh, yes, now, it does. understand yeah. that David Icke is an absolute lunatic, uh, but he's a beautiful lunatic. Uh, so Doesn't uh, make him wrong. It doesn't make him wrong. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, remember, he one time thought he was Jesus. Just always remember that. Um, but um, <laughs> yes, he did. yeah, no royal conspiracies could be fun. That's and that's connected to today as well. We did touch on those things, didn't we? Yes. Did Rome yes, we create did. Christ as propaganda for the empire? James Valiant's creating Christ book. Yeah, no, I know, I know the story, of the book you're talking about, and uh, it's a it's a good interesting point because we're talking about Constantine here, um, and uh, his. Um, his, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, absconding of the uh, Catholic Church. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Uh, like how Queen Elizabeth I was uh, thought to be a guy. Uh, that's interesting. Of course, it also gets into reptilians in there, face changing. I don't know how they got mm-hmm. so crazy in that uh, aspect. It's just video. Well, that would lead to uh, back to aliens, and which is, of course, the, you know, the ultimate conspiracy theories again. Uh-huh. You've got well, the right. one that hey, says. I'm, I'm... I'm good with that. Yeah. The uh, British royal crown is werewolves. I've heard that one. They're werewolves. Um, there's all kinds of them out there about royal families. <laughs> well, you know, an interesting uh, thing to talk about royal families, right? Uh, the Ao uh, Shi, uh, which, of course, today we call the fairies or the fae folk mm-hmm. or the little people. Um, if you go back and read the oldest stories of the Ao Shi, uh, what you would find, find is they were actually giants white and they were vampiric in nature they ate people now that's something we didn't really touch on today because we were talking about hidden histories we weren't talking specifically about ancient peoples or uh, or giants and specific uh, specifically but uh, do understand that all across uh the the cultures of the world the giants ate people so the mm-hmm. fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman yep. is not an outrageous, simply fairy tale. It was based on upon uh, people's opinions and ideas, right? Um, so, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we can do fairies or royal conspiracies, which goes into bloodlines and all other types of different royal things. Ooh, ancient alien tech talks. Uh, that's one I don't know a lot about. So hopefully we'd have someone here that would be able to carry the heavy lifting in that. Uh, I know a little bit about ancient alien tech, but I don't know much, dude. Um, uh, makes me want to dig out the uh, time life mysteries of the unknown series. Yeah, yeah, that was a good, good show. Grind his. That would also go back to, to just the uh, the uh, things, the stones, the pyramid, those types of ancient alien uh, technologies yeah, as well. Sure, sure. We touched on that a little bit today. We just stayed away from the aliens. We stayed away from Anunnaki. We stayed away from that stuff, uh, just to kind of talk about the structure right, of yeah. things in general, right? So attack on Titan got the giant stuff right. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jonah. Uh, but yeah, no, well, the stories of uh, g- giant cannibals is widespread, very much so. Yeah. That yeah the the the, the giants uh, that we're we're finding them. There's 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 proof of them, and there's a conspiracy to hide them. Yeah. So that would go along with that one as well. So giants, fairies, or royal conspiracies is still the t- the the big ones. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh wow, they they all kind of connect in a way. Oh, Denali, help me. We should, what should we do? Make a decision. Bloodlines. Bloodlines. 
That's a good, t- okay. that's a good tag too. Bloodlines. Like Royal conspiracy. Here, here's the bloodlines. teaser. Here's the teaser for Bloodlines. Almost, uh, I think every single president of the United States of America is a cousin. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know if Trump is, but I know all Obama. the way up to. Uh, yeah, that's true. All the way up to Obama, he is a yes. long lost cousin. All the way back to Washington. All the way back to. Bruce. Which is very interesting. All the way back well, to right, Bruce, but I'm talking about just right. American specifically. Yeah, they go all the way back to Washington, and then they go back further. Very interesting <laughs> point, yeah. And you know, the, the, here's an, another interesting little point that has nothing to do with nothing, but I just thought it was kind of cute because you mentioned presidents. Bush, mm-hmm. the Bush family, uh, of course, Bush mm-hmm. means forest in the ancient uh, uh, language, right? Uh, Norwegian. Mm-hmm. Uh, it means forest. My name is Bush B or Busby. Right, and the, here's the ir- ironic twist. My name means forest lord, uh, because a long, long time ago they were bosses of the forest, and uh, you can even find places in uh, uh, Britain and uh, Strathclyde region where uh, the county of Busby castles and all kind of stuff. Uh, but of course, we're not that now. Uh, but um, uh, but here's the interesting thing: some at some point in the past, uh, my ancestors or some connection to my bloodline. Uh, would have had the Bush family's ancestors working for us on on the field. Boy, to how times change, man! Damn it! <laughs> right? <laughs> it's true, right? It's in well, the, the Bu- power. Well, you want to talk about conspiracies? You know how the Bushes made a lot of their money, right? A war profiteering, and what they exactly, and what they did with that money was they, Mister Senior Bush, not the president, but his dad, um, funded Hitler. He was even yeah, called into Congress. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. You got to hold on to that one, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we'll hold on. We'll hold on to it. Okay. Anyway, guys, so we're going to do yeah. bloodlines next week. But uh, damn bushes. Damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, thank you all for coming. This was a lot of fun as usual. And, uh, you know, uh, keep in mind that we got a bunch of projects going on on IndieCron. Go check that out. Definitely support that. Uh, we have links right down below to IndieCron, uh, as well as my Twitter and Facebook if you want to be on this show if uh, or if you want to be on Drawn and Quartered. And I, I invite you guys, if you want to come up here and talk about conspiracy theories with us, come on in. Come on. You're more than welcome. Uh, and those links are just down below. We also have a link to, as I said, to Andy Crown. Uh, and we have our own project, which is uh, many of us are working on here for Tales from Beyond the Gate. Uh, please check that out and support us. We, we definitely need your support. Uh, it's a really good book. And uh, just take some time to look at it. And we hope you will uh, get on board with that. Uh, but beyond that, uh, thank you guys a lot. And uh, we're going to let uh, Denali take us out, as usual. Well... Thank you, everybody, for this conspiracy talk with Tinfoil Talk. I'm glad everybody was able to make it with no trouble from YouTube. Wink, wink. Uh, join us tomorrow uh, for Comics Do Today, where we're talking about comics news in Bugs Bear Basement on Tuesday as well. Um, but as always, your perception shapes your reality for real. So always make it a good one. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Later, guys. Aloha.